So where we left off, uh, after dispersing the amalgamation of spirits, Norok had a short conversation with the released spirit of Obo, while the revenant of his uncle Shok uh, left his belongings on the uh, on the, the kind of edge of the finny there, and then dove into it. Uh, Ozzy's astral projection stands nearby quietly. Uh, he's he hadn't been disturbing the important conversation. Uh, Ben, while that scene was happening, I was working and I forgot a specific thing to tell you that that uh, Obo uh, had said. Um, Obo had passed a message to you from Kor saying, seek the peace of the mountains where all the lights are stars. Um, I want to point that out that part of that should sound familiar from, well, familiar from like two years ago, literally. Um, so I don't know if you, if, you know, you, Becky, you probably have better better notes about that. Has it written down, so. Yeah, so so uh, yeah, if you want to if you want to go back to a long time ago through your notes uh, to see if that general area of when he would have heard about this, so it can... would have been after you guys had reached Morvok. So before you got to um, well, where the Crowfort is now, uh, when you guys were in the Neo Tower. Yeah, uh, it was either well, hang on, so. Basically, there and earlier. I'll put it that way. Okay. So, yeah, it would, could have potentially come up earlier. Start searching through. See what it <laughs> All right. Um, uh, let me go. I didn't preload it, but actually, it is kind of a big map. I should have preloaded it. This may take a second to load. We'll give it a sec here. So is that is that it, guys? Is this? Thing? Do we? Is it plan on? Does it come back? Or do we just? Do we just beat it? Beat it? I know we we're originally planning on just sending it back to his realm, but I mean, is it over? For now, it seems like it is. I don't know. He might regroup Not, in the future. I don't know. But as of right now, it seemed like we. Do you think they're going to be that. mad at us when we go back upstairs? Well, like I said, like I told them, uh, if we uh, mm. if we win, they can't be mad at us because you know. He didn't escape, so. <laughs> yeah, but does they like give you an answer like, "Oh, that makes sense," or they just kind of look at you like a ghost, like, "Oh, ambiguous." Yeah, the Norok, second one, real quick, the ghost one. Uh, uh, Norok, you are across the the thinny itself in the little center island with uh, with Avar. Um, you know, you you both were sitting down and talking to Obo. So, I mean, as he's kind of starting to stand up, uh, you'd be having to shout pretty heavily because it is very loud and and like difficult to even communicate in here with the noise. From the city. All right. Well, so, then when I so Norak specifically. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. If you're going to go ahead and cross back, that's fine. Yeah. Right. Once Obo leaves, I'll go back over and take a little man with me. All right. And no one's hurt, right? We already took care of that. Everyone's good. I'm okay. Ooh. Yeah, I think I told oh. everybody. Oh. Yeah. So should we get out of here and hopefully the ghosts are nice? Well, the ghost might be gone. I guess that's a way to tell. Is that a thing? They're just going to go away? Well, that was yeah, the reason they were, they were here. Yeah. Ozzy interrupts. Ooh, what crap, what ghosts are, are we referring to? Me by that. <laughs> what are the, who are these ghosts? What are you referring to? Well, there's Jim, and I think one of them's name yeah. is Steven. <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps a <little> Michael? <laughs> uh, we didn't I get know. their names. No, we did. We got a couple. I got this. I'm gonna hold up my new little musical instrument. <laughs> that looks fancy. Uh, what is that? It looks Methuen. Then is that where we yeah, are? Yeah, yeah. The well, those the Methuen. Um, Practor or Praetor? Uh, yeah. yeah, or something. Or the Death Knight. Um, yeah, Praetor Tiberius. Uh, yeah, Tiberius, uh, Septus, and um, I can't remember her name. Axia. Oh, Axia, yeah. There. Uh, then I think I know where we are. Well, where you all are. Technically, I'm still at home. But I asked, how is home? How is it doing over there? He gives a, a, a subtle shrug that is somewhat indifferent. It's not great. Um, situation is worsening by the day. How long has it been? I know it's been, we've been on this hill for fucking ever. 
what has it been like? Six days? Seven days? Uh, let's see. Let me look back at the long. date. Uh, let me look back at the date for when you guys teleported here. Modeloid. And it was before Bure. It was before Rizana. It was... Uh, around the 25th of, uh, sorry, 25th of Harvestry. Um, wait, it can't be that long. Hang on. I must have the month wrong on there. Let's see, it was one, two, three, four. Yeah, shit, it was. It was like two weeks ago. Least, oh, two weeks? So 14 yep. days? Yep. Oh, that's right, because we didn't, that's right, we weren't, yeah, we've been here a fucking minute. Uh, well, technically, you guys teleported back to, to get Pogo resurrected, and then came back again after that. Uh, when you so that was the first time when you guys first teleported out to uh, where um, where Sarah's family is from, uh, where the righteous hand and, and all that stuff. Uh, when you teleported back was first to Brandus, so it's been like eleven days. Well, we'll probably be. I assume. Do we have anything more to do in this area, or are we going to go back there and check on Maibi? Is she still hanging in there? Is she any progress on her front? She's still getting better day by day, but in and out of, of comas, in and out of, of rests that don't seem to end. Does she have, like, her fingers or anything working yet? Yeah, she's intact now, yes, if that's what you're asking. Her pieces have been reassembled, thanks to the uh, somewhat morose saving you all had done. Artemis had saved her finger bones. I don't know if you guys remember that. She put them in a bag and she kept them. I remember well, the best part was she was like, yeah, I grabbed her hands. I was like, I don't think you grabbed her hands. You <laughs> grabbed a stack of it was, Yes, it was Arts. like, it was grabbing a pile of dice, except they were like, like fleshy bones. Chunks of so bones. Grab a bunch of bones, throw them in a glass of milk for later. <laughs> it was like teeth. Just put uh, them in. Just push uh, it. Uh, that was before um, before Nazim joined, but they when they found this woman who is a uh, she's a Vabian guide, by the way, uh, uh, Nazim. So this will be relevant for for you later. Um, but she she's basically a double agent, kind of for the for the you know for the good guys against the Vabians, if you were to consider the Vabians the bad guys. But uh, a torturer, yeah, a little bit. Um, the torturer had uh, realized who she was. And cut off her fingers and her and one leg and you know blinded her and basically cut her fingers off and and, uh, and uh, knuckle by knuckle. So it was a pile of you know bits of fingers. But and she got Artemis. Artemis Arte threw all those in a bag so they could reattach later. <laughs> and she's been recovering for a while from that. So. Hey so Nora. Yeah. Hey Nora, how are you doing? Um, Shook seemed to have made a bit of a decision there. Are you okay with that? I mean, obviously he was... Something was a bit off. I think he realized when he got here that it was more than he wanted to live with. Yeah, well, I'm sure he's been a better place now anyway. Because he obviously wasn't himself. Uh, Lobo was telling me actually that his, his spirit wasn't even there, that his spirit was on the other side with everybody over there. So that was just a odd... Uh, version of him, I guess you can say. So, he's better off now. You see a brief flash out of the corner of your eye, Norok, back, like, behind you, in, in the thinny. Okay. I'll turn around and look. Um, turning around, then, you see a, a, a kind of uh, um, indistinct form, a vaguely humanoid form, yog-shaped, uh, kind of coalescing out of the thinny a little bit. It's clear who it's obviously supposed to be, um, and there's a, a very careful, um, uh, like a respectful nod uh, that is uh, uh, identifying enough that you recognize that that clearly has to be Shok. Um, okay. And then there's a, a kind of a, a swirl, and the energy uh, flows into, like, into into your back, essentially. Okay. Do we see this? No. Okay. Avar right. appears to, though. Avar's eyes go very wide, and he's Kind of, kind of stepping back a little bit. He, the helmet is still uh, in his arms, and he's just kind of holding on to it. But he kind of lifts it up like he's about to put it back on his head, like he's not sure what's about to happen. All right, calm he, down, uh, kid. We're done. We're gonna relax. <laughs> is he kind of trying to communicate with me, or do I feel any different, or what? Uh, you feel like if you needed to, you could call on Shok and or Obo and other. Uh, familial ancestors, not necessarily just your own bloodline, but just, you know, Yogg spirits, uh, to assist you if needed. Okay, so yeah, he's, he wasn't 
trying to take over to say anything, so he's just belonged for the ride. That's the impression. Part of him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You you, cool. you don't know if you'd be able to communicate with him, but that is the impression that you got from Obo from the conversation is that if you needed to, that they'll be um, you know able to communicate with you to help if if you need it. Uh, in awesome. your character sheet, you'll see a, a, a thing under. I think it's under features. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's at the top of your features list there. And I can't find anything in my notes. Well, good. <laughs> well, I remember, I remember exactly what he said. The stars on the hilltop look good at night. Exactly the word. <laughs> yeah, that verbatim. Said. That was it, right? Okay. <laughs> Very uh, poetic. Is, that's what he said right there. And specifically, the part you'd be looking for in your notes is, that's is not too bad. Uh, all the lights remember. and stars. You actually were, but yeah, I mean, you didn't get not it verbatim. I yeah. thought you actually did know verbatim when you were just joking, but no, you're actually pretty damn close. <laughs> oh, <my> hands, <laughs> Specifically, the part you'd be looking for in your notes are all the lights are stars. It That's is. Um, yeah, it's, it's on his sword. Yeah, it was a sword. Yeah, it's on his axe. It's on Bokenberg. The it's uh, the inscription says, "Seek the sky. All the lights are stars." I like to picture Norok like picking up his axe, like <laughs> me for God. <laughs> so originally, that sword, that, that great sword, had been in um, in the tomb at Kufunamat, um and the, the 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 sword had been there so long that it had kind of absorbed enough negative energy to to not be um, basically it would have negative effects. Uh, if you were to try to use it. So you had it melted down into the war mattock, which is Vulcan Wrecker, and that's what you have now. But specifically, when you <clears> did that, um, the the Miotau that did the reforging for you, he asked you if you wanted to leave the inscription or not, and you did, and he left that inscription, which is in Methuen. Uh, you couldn't read it at the time, uh, but when you guys got to uh, uh, the Dunskath Act, that's where they converted or uh, translated it for you, and that's what it says on the haft. Okay. Obo didn't know what it meant. He just trans. He just passed the message along from Core to you. All right. So Ozzy says, "So, what is the the plan then? Are we, you know, do you need me to open the other side so that you can teleport back? I've only got a few, maybe one more minute." Yeah. You can see his kind of his his astral projection shape. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be there, we'll but. be. I mean, I want to go upstairs and see what everything what's going there, but then we're gonna be we're gonna be leaving. And this time we're taking this little guy with us. This giant little guy. He peers around uh, uh, Norok. Okay. We met him earlier, didn't we? Did we? Maybe. A long time ago. Was it back in the village? No, it would have been 11 days ago. Nice. When you guys teleported back. Uh, no, never mind. You, Avar oh, wasn't there yet. Remember I was trying to get... I was going to do the fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, we should be there uh, momentarily. Uh, in the shake of a lamb's tail. All right. Well, thankfully, you caught me early enough in the morning that uh, I'll, I'll be able to get you guys back. So let me know when you're ready. And he gives a kind of a, a, a little nod and then disappears. Can we get away from the sound now? It's giving me a migraine. Am I still deaf? No, it only lasts a minute. Okay. Yeah, we should go. Yeah. We're done here. Uh, right? We're done here? Is there anything you need to get? You don't have to, like, do any more weird things? Uh, we don't have to do a dance or anything? It's just good? We're all good? We don't have to come yeah, back. Yeah. I'm just... I just don't want to come back here soon. If we can avoid it. Are we going to have to... If you... Heaven forbid, if you pass away, do we have to do this for you too? <laughs> well, you could if you wanted to, but you guys aren't young, so you don't really have to. What happens if one of us tries to do it? If we like, you know, fly over there and do that, are we gonna get attacked by a bunch of yogs and in, in in sheets as ghosts? Is that yeah, do we know is that a bad thing? They'll probably come eat you. Well, that's some fucking fine. Some I, guess small people. I guess we're just gonna have to find uh, one of the random yogs left and make sure they get here safely. Maybe. How many just don't die? Avar kind of interrupts. Um, Quietly, and then this is it's clear that this question is mostly to Norok, but he says it, uh, he has to say it loud enough because of Finny that everybody's able to hear. I'm not really a Yogg, right? I mean, he said that I'm a Yogg too. You're half. 
You're half yog and you're half human. You're half ape. What is the size of? <laughs> yeah, maybe half ape. I don't know, buddy. But what if I don't? What if I don't want to be? I don't want people to be afraid of me like they're afraid of you. <laughs> ah, he's called just scary. <laughs> I know. It's not always a bad thing, buddy. Believe me. And what's truly scary is your attitude. If you have a good positive attitude, they won't be afraid of you for very long. But you can help protect people, though. So, it, it's a good thing. I mean, look at it this way. I thought he ate my people, and now we're the best friends. You really thought he was just eating, <laughs> eating us? Well, that's what <laughs> horrible rumor. Cool. My town, thanks. That's what everybody. That's what all my friends. That's what all my friends thought too. They said that that when they came down from the mountains, they would steal kids and eat them. <laughs> well, no, that, you'll that's not fine. true. You'll find friends. Just don't be a dick. And you'll be fine. I had friends. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry about that. We'll make new ones. It's going to be tough, but we'll find you a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get, we'll get <laughs> See if the crawl blinders have an on staff therapist. Yeah. <laughs> for PTSD. We'll, we'll, we'll get it sorted. See, maybe maybe the Empire's VA program is better than the United States one. <laughs> Find someone who, who there's we still have you know, there's sporting teams that would love to have a kid like you on their field. <laughs> you get this, we'll go just oh no he's just big for his age yeah, he, like, yeah. he's secretly yeah. he's secretly 24 but they try to yeah. you know play him off as being 11 yeah he's 11 years old we'll go <laughs> find you some a rugby team to join and you'll make a nice amount of money and everyone just think you're a bit large you play it to your strengths uh, he, he's, he's clearly very uncomfortable uh, with this and he lifts the helmet up and, and puts it back on anyways oh come on that's Let's go see if these ghosts are still here. If if they need us to do any, tell them what happened or anything, so they can go back to the resting spot. We can go check. I'm pretty sure they just disappear when he's gone, but we should probably go double check. Well, if they're gone, we should see what else is up there before we leave. That's not a bad idea. Well, might as well. It doesn't hurt. I mean, how long do you have to wait until it goes from grave robbing to archaeology? <laughs> uh... Is it like a hundred years? Two hundred? I, I don't think it really matters in this case. I mean, eventually it's archaeology. Eventually someone's going to be like studying it. And... Sure, but who's going to come up here with a giant dragon? Along the Normally it's a few hundred years. <laughs> I like I like her attitude towards this. I think, and these have been here. How long? Anyone remember how long these have been here? These, I feel like it's been a, a minute. It's been a while. No rock knows. No, no, how long have they been here? The, the, the spirits? That actually, yeah. they said that it wasn't all that long ago that they got here, right? No, no, not the spirits. Like, when did they die originally? Like, they were, they've been dead for hundreds and hundreds of years. Five? Five hundred? Four hundred? No, it was like a hundred fifty years. Oh, it, was, years. it was about a hundred, uh, let me, I'm well, not like, giving the exact, but, um, when, when the Archimedes. yog took the place back, yeah. You all heard Artemis. She said one, two, two hundred years. So this is still falls in that question. <laughs> I'm not going to be stealing wedding rings or anything. I'm just, I mean, not stealing. Archaeologically digging to see if there's anything of historical importance. Yeah, but if it's a historical importance, normally you'd bring it to a museum or you'd study it. You wouldn't sell it for money. Well, no, it says, either. Or you can says, sell it to a museum. Yeah, but she says that wearing the <laughs> the, the like most valuable crown jewel of the uh, of the uh, Monodoran elves on her head that is supposed uh, yeah. to be back in a museum but it instead is, is being worn. but it is also a healing device so it's useful <laughs> right but when those elves come looking for it that's on you <laughs> we're gonna bring it back relax <laughs> just haven't had a chance yet yeah, that's true I'm gonna get uh, back. No, Ben. Ben was sorry, G. Uh, so the other event from 150 years ago is not the same one. Uh, but yeah, Ben. Ben was closer to writing. It was about 450 years ago. Okay. Um, when the when Mist basically the the Empire wiped out the rest of the Methuans here uh, and then formed a diplomatic agreement with the what claims tribes like the Yog uh, uh, in the Wild Southern Accord, which you know let them basically have their have uh, Calderfell back. So yeah, about 450 years that they've been dead. 450? Oh, we're fine. 
<laughs> go on an expedition. That's, that's well within the safety ra- or the safety yeah. uh, uh, range that Artemis had given. Right? <laughs> there might be things up there that are of importance. Look at this. This was here, and I'm going to hold up. Mind that you, that's question. from the whole, like the whole people being killed, not just a few, right? Oh, well, I'm <laughs> just saying... archaeological dig. It's due to extinction or something to try and figure out what the culture was, sure. not if they're still existing people. But there might be people in, you know, the empire that uh, are very curious about what happened down here in Methuala. Methuala. Wherever <laughs> we are. This place, this... And then, then they might intrigue people. All I'm saying is I didn't want to do it with all the ghosties watching around me. It <laughs> seemed unsafe and disrespectful. Right, well, let's at least go up and see if they're gone. Let's do it. All right. Uh, you, you, I'll go ahead and move you guys back to the other level here. I preloaded it, so hopefully it doesn't take long for everybody to pop over. All right. Uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't. I didn't delete them. <laughs> uh, but everybody climbs your way back out. Shoke is obviously gone. All that. Uh, as you climb your way back up um, uh, out of the hole, you have to kind of uh, probably Art or Sarah has to fly up with the broom and. Uh, attach a rope to a rock, things like that, to kind of get everybody back up through the hole. Uh, I'll tell you that as you pass through where the barrier was, Artime, you had specifically seen the barrier because um, I think Pogo did too, and maybe Sarah. Um, but when the Legion was was teleporting everybody away, um, you saw him lashing out at the barrier. At least Artime did, um, and saw the kind of flash of it. Uh, um, and now, as you pass through the area, that barrier is gone completely. Um, it seems that that uh, not only have the um, of the spirits of the uh, Mephuin garrison that was here dissipated, but also the barrier that they had placed around the Thinny is also gone. I forgot to warn you too, there might be like another hand or a hand floating around here, <laughs> walking around. But I don't know if there's like. See, here's the thing I'm thinking if there's other body parts that can't be that mobile. So, <laughs> worst case, we've got like one, two hands, and then maybe. Maybe a head? Torso. Ironically, ironically enough. Maybe feet. one torso and one leg. <laughs> ironically <laughs> enough, though, feet by themselves, not particularly mobile. Yeah, Hands, on the other hand. <laughs> I mean, they can move slowly, just <laughs> inching across the floor. Just let everyone keep an eye. I don't know what, if it was strange, and I didn't enjoy it. It's going to give me a nightmare. You know what's funny, actually, is that there was a little bit of Justin <laughs> in response to originally when I uh, uh, when I described it as, you know, you... you uncover it enough and it's a hand and that it scurried away like a scorpion kind of description like I heard a little bit of Justin squeal in there too like it wasn't just a pogo like, like, like oh that sounds disgusting <laughs> but you guys make your way back up to the top of the hole there um, there is still this kind of ever present uh, uh, discordant shrill sound coming up from below but it is much much better up here than it is down there um uh, you know, the, the kind of headache-inducing, uh, nausea-inducing uh, uh, shrill is is uh, not so bad now that you've got some distance. So but it appears not, it's quiet, and there you don't see any spirits around. I'm not going to play, uh, and or I'm not going to look for anything in particular. But I would like to uh, just walk around uh, with my with my. Uh, Eldritch blasts uh, as a, as a, at the uh, ready. I'm just going to look around in general to see if I see anything that could be of either historical import or of value, um, anything like that. Okay. Uh, you can just kind of give me a general description. I, I sure. Um, in the the rooms have been uh, pretty heavily not ransacked, but basically the. It seems like anything of particular value has probably been taken, and you would guess based on, you know, the, the um, let's say that the equipment that the Death Knight had uh, uh, gathered around himself, uh, both he and Axia, um, had armed themselves with what valuable things there had been here, um, meaning that the you know basically the stuff that was still secured away that hadn't been looted they took, uh, which the armband, for example, is still on Norok's arm, um, and you still have the. Uh, uh, the ocarina. Uh, so it, it seems like they probably, you know, what, what things were left here, um, they probably were the ones that, the, you know, the important people of the garrison had, had uh, used to arm themselves, uh, whereas the rest of the spirits were not armed. 
um, there are small bits of uh, you know uh, pot sherds and uh, you know little little chunks of um, uh, metal you know bits like plates and things like that around uh, that could potentially have historical significance to somebody like an archaeologist, but not necessarily something that would be functional or useful to your guys's purposes. So potentially some some minor valuables, but nothing uh, of, of significant import. Most of the place has been pretty well looted by this point. And like, not by the yog, but by you know the people that flew in on on airships and, and then looted the place, things like that. Quill's not at the, the thing anymore, right? He's gone. He's still there. Yeah, he's still at the crow fort. Oh. You talked to him not that long ago. Uh, you went to ask That's him your dad, about. Right? No. No, Theodore was her dad. Uh, Quill is the Imperial historian uh, for the Crow Blinders. Uh, he's a he's an honorary Crow Binder, but he's an historian. Um, you went and spoke with him. I forget why. I think it might have been to ask him about Corn's Antilus. Yeah, I know I had talked to him before. I just wasn't sure if he was still there the last time I. Had... Yeah, yeah. You spoke with him. Um, uh, let's see. That was right after you guys met Shoke. Okay, then I will grab some of those plates and stuff that you know, a historian might like. We'll just you know, sure. give them to him. Yeah. Uh, you know that he does study the Methuens in particular as well. Anyways, Dunskathak, where the, the the ruins that the Crow Fort lifted up underneath, basically the ruins that you guys went into where you found the broken broom and the coins and all that stuff, remember? Uh, that mm -hmm. was a Methuen ruin. So, all right. Uh, but you gather some of those things up. Um, apart from that, I mean, it, it, it looks like this is intended to be a relatively Spartan uh, kind of, a, you know, defensible facility, uh, not really a, um, uh, you know, a, a place for housing treasures, essentially. Well, shall we go ahead and uh, head back to the Crow Fort? Yep. Uh, while they finish looking through stuff, I will start the circle, because it's going to take a full minute. Okay. Oh, a whole minute. Oh, you did this as a fourth level spell, too? Oh, look at you. I um, left. Actually, I have a lot left. <coughs> Let's see. I have a surprising amount left, too. Yeah, that fight, <laughs> I really, I thought that was going to be a lot harder for you guys, but you really did everything you possibly could to kind of mitigate uh, a lot of the, the threat from that fight, so good job. I'm just still surprised Avar's breathing. He almost wasn't. Well. Um, there is, hang on a looking through my notes here from something from a while back that I have to find from three or four months ago for Azim. <laughs> <laughs> so I have I have a note in here under my names for Lyraleth mm -hmm. and I have it as Artemis aunt yeah, but the Lyria, aunt yeah. you chose makes the line on the A almost invisible oh. So it looks like C U N T. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> like, so <laughs> what? Where is it? So the font that you have, maybe it's not. Wait, my you're talking about a, you're talking about a note inside of Foundry that I made. It's it's it says Artemis Aunt A U N T, but it's the line on the right of the C is is almost invisible. So it looks like I gotta C -U -N -T. I gotta see this. I'm looking for it. It's called foreshadowing. Maybe. It's under my notes. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't choose this. This was a font that came with the. <laughs> it definitely does. <laughs> there, there, uh, screen grab me, it. Me, I, I was just going this. through my names. I was like, "What did I do?" <laughs> <laughs> here, I'll drop this in Discord so everybody can see it. <laughs> You're not that much of a dick. Come on. <laughs> uh, this. This is what like. He didn't choose the font. This is the, that add-on, uh, like use that. See, but font even in the even in the picture on uh, Discord, it doesn't. It's because it's like too big. Or yeah, like, that's true. It is. It's zoomed way out. It's, so like when it's when it's yeah. really small, the text is really small. Oh, oh yeah. God. Yeah, it's it's on my screen. That line's almost invisible. It's just. Which <laughs> <laughs> uh, I dropped it in the Ember's channel. 
I, but the Embers channel does not seem to do it justice compared to my Yeah, I, I mean, I could grab the whole thing just to, to you know, ah. show the text size. But basically, it looks like, because it's really small, there's, there's a, you know, a long list of 20 names or something like that. Uh, and that's just one of them. And the text is really small. So the A-U-N-T looks like C-U-N-T in his notes. So I was trying to figure out what in the hell I meant by that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> God damn it! And then I got I was clicked off of the page that I was looking at. Um, nope, not that one. Do, 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 do. This is potentially relevant before that. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll here. Sako, I'm gonna send it to you separately. Okay. Um, as th that just kind of uh, a brief flash there uh, as Sarah finishes the channeling necessary for the circle um, it flashes blue there's there's a ring around the floor uh, 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 Avar is looking around like like nervous uh, he kind of lifted the, the helmet up enough to be able to see he couldn't see through the helmet very well uh, what, what, what do I do what do we do uh, just run through we, we only got a few I'm just, just like in. you saw them do before just go I'm, I'm already in Right. <laughs> he rushes in, uh, waiting for Norok uh, to, to go, and then and rushes in right after Norok. Uh, you uh, barrel through the, uh, the the kind of wormhole appearance uh, of this this kind of blue and electrical tunnel, uh, snapping eastward until you arrive back at the Crowfort. Um, it is oh, uh, how cold it was here. And, go from cold someone, to cold. Yeah, it is cold. It's less not nearly cold. as cold. Yeah, it's a lot less cold. It's not the it's not the super well. It is still it's not supernatural cold. It's 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 a cold because there's a hole in the sky that is pouring out snow, uh, that, that is opening up to. Uh, to Never a, thought a cold I'd be thing. in a place in my life where I enjoy being underground. This is a weird spot that we've found ourselves in. Yeah. I'm missing well, a cave. <laughs> uh, but you are you're actually inside the keep anyways in, in the uh, teleportation room uh, it is dark uh, but as soon as the the, uh, the flash the kind of blinding light uh, in the semi nauseous moment of, of uh, reacclimating uh, uh, finishes you see the, the kind of blue dim uh, glow fade away uh, and Ozzy standing in the room there with his arms kind of folded you uh, managed to, to handle that problem as well then it seems you didn't seem like you needed much help despite your uh, claims otherwise. Yep, nope, still got Willow's luck, apparently. For now. You, well. This is, by the way, this kid right here did not get murdered by that thing. He like, looks down at Avar. He looks down at Avar and, and looks up to, to Norok. He gives a, a kind of a, a questioning glance. He doesn't say anything, but there, there's clearly a question uh, in, in his in his look to Norok, and he looks yeah. back to Avar. And just to confirm, we still don't actually know it's his kid. Like I don't know that. Like I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, yeah, Pogo doesn't know that. I just think it's just a fucking kid. Yeah, I don't think he told any of us. Yeah, I don't think like, Norok has told anybody. Yeah, Jake. and I mean, even if there's a maybe, like I don't think I would. I don't think Pogo know enough about the Yog to know how many few. Yeah. Few so so I would put it this way: is that that there's definitely a resemblance, but he does look more human than Yog. Like bone structure. He's much too big, and like that, the head shape is a little wrong. But it's you, you feel like you know as he grows up, he'll probably resemble you know Yog more and more. Uh, but uh, as far as you know, uh, skin tone and and basic facial features, he does play uh, uh, has his his mother's uh, countenance. But it seems Ozzy was enough to you know Ozzy was able to to recognize the difference there. So what is the um? Be the plan now. Maibi isn't quite ready for her excursion into into the dead south, but what do you intend to do now? As a team, what do we have available? We uh, we can go back to the ship that's crashed. We can uh, what else? And we can go north. But all yeah, know. that was the capital. I was going to check on my botanical stuff and uh, the 
other. Oh, I don't. I don't mean that you need to decide right this moment. You're obviously you can head back to your kettle keep and and rest as much as you like. I just was, you know, trying to plan ahead. We still have forces to send in and out, trying to to gather what supplies we can and so on, and try to keep this place stable enough that. Are we still at a ceasefire? Are we still at a ceasefire for now? Pardon the pun, but it's a bit of a cold war at the moment. Um, <laughs> They, they keep sending in uh, occasional excursions. They found the tunnel, by the way. Uh, so they keep, um, you know, sending in spies occasionally, trying to, you know, middle of the night, send a, a clamber up over the walls to try to sneak in. It's it's getting worse by the day, but nothing we can do until my Eevee is ready to travel. At least they haven't really attacked anyone yet. Yeah, but they still but... insist that we have the, the scales and, and unless... Unless the command is a better... We're just starting to destroy the scales, and if they, uh... Do we have any idea where the scales actually are? Is the better question. Keep it down. You, you know, just asked it at the right? same volume. Why are you, saying, why are you shutting her? No, I that? asked if we were going to destroy the scale. Do they think we're going to destroy them? Is that like, they're they're not attacking? Because <laughs> not that they... they Because, you know, obviously we have them. But do they think we're going to destroy okay, them? Is so, that why so they're just, not attacking us? Just so that me as the DM, I understand. Are you trying to insinuate they know that, that we don't have them? But we are because we don't, right? I'm like, you, as far as you, as far as everybody yeah. knows, you do not have them. Yes, yeah. uh, but so, are, is Pogo trying to play as if I'm in Pogo's case someone's serious. listening? Yes, exactly. Okay. okay. So I'm Pogo. Heard the whole spies, and we had that one person that was imitating Clover. Um, yep. Clover Yep. So I'm going to pretend like we do until <laughs> I know we're safe. Okay, all right. Uh, Ozzy gives kind of a kind of a sideways look. Um, unless the commander is a better liar than, than I'm able to ascertain, then no, we, we don't, and nor do we have any idea where they are. Right. Is there any other literature or anything that would give us hints of where they are? Well, well there, there was one guy. The halfling that we discovered. Yeah. Yep. He said they were in the yeah, 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 house... Gone. In that other town, that I'm pretty sure didn't we go back and look? In Cadogan. Yeah, Cadogan. I thought we went back to try to find it, and we just found ruin. I don't think we went. Back. No, I don't think we went back ah. either. Fuck! Did we not do this? No, I think we just heard it was in ruin, and we were like, we're just not going to go back. We should go back. We should go back. <laughs> Wait, no, we can't. That's right. I think we've discussed this. We can't because there's no way to get there safely. It's through the thousands and thousands of soldiers out there. Thousands and thousands of them. <laughs> and they now know where the tunnel is, so. Uh huh. So you yeah, see what we're we had. We had this plan. So the good news is maybe they don't know about it. Perhaps. Uh, you. Okay. Do you remember the fight you guys had when you had arrived at the docks and Sarah was on the broom? Pogo, Pogo and Sarah were on the broom dropping bombs, and then Sarah fell off of it. That was at the Cadogan docks. That was as you guys were returning, uh, and the Vabians had taken Cadogan at that point already. Yeah. That's that's basically to the west of where you guys, of the Crow Fort, southwest, uh, a little bit of where you guys are at right now. But who you're talking about are called the Cranog Irregulars. It was, it was a group of, um, of halflings and uh, Akenku and some others. Um, that yeah. are kind of a a weird militia out of the swamps surrounding there, the Cranog. Um, and one of them had some, you know, uh, family history that had, you know, acquired... So here's the thing. It might be more. in the town, or it might have been taken by one of them. You know, we saved a bunch of people in that town, told them to go on their way and to find cover with those other, you know, woodland creep people. But, I mean... How about now? If we rethink this, is there any way to get there? I mean, we got a little time. We can, we can go there just to maybe look reconnaissance. We don't have to fight anything. I don't. Here's the thing: the way this other army seems to work, it doesn't seem like they're gonna even leave people there. They'll just go through, take what they need, destroy, and then leave. Like it's probably empty. Might be yeah. filled with some owl bears or something, something to eat, would old meat. Think that if they went through all the trouble to take the town, that they would thoroughly search the town. And if no, they still think that we have the scales, then they're obviously not in that town. Yeah, so that's the thing. is They wouldn't do it unless they knew what they were looking for, or they had foot soldiers and maybe didn't know the exact details. You can't just take a couple people and have them search the whole town 
properly for a thing that you're not even sure of what it is or what it looks for or what it looks like, you know. It could be there. The uh, only Artemis, way... Artemis would have some historic knowledge of what it's supposed to look like, that it's a sheaf of scales. So like basically like yeah. a chunk of skin with scales on it. Uh, but the scales are huge. I mean, it's very heavy. It's not like a thing you could put in your pocket. Um, think like a like a poster, like a big poster, like a wall, a painting maybe, uh, like that size um, of, you know, a hard back like frame and everything. Like it, this is, you know, a historical uh, piece. It's not something that is just free that you just roll up and you know, throw in a backpack with big snake scales on it. Yeah, if we find it, how are we getting it back? That would be the issue, but to scale it actually Nora not Rock's be in danger. Be able to <laughs> No, because like, Nora, Nora can wear it like a cape. <laughs> the only way to go scouting without putting any of his danger would be sending Psy and Noct to, to go scouting to see if they could find it, but then once it's found, the issue would be to actually retrieve it, right? It is many miles away, too, though. It's yeah, not, that's real yeah. hard. We had to walk for a couple, it was at least a, it was It was like, like a, a solid day two day, day and a half, yeah, of, of running with Artemis yeah. in, in Aurox form. Like 30 mm -hmm. miles away, maybe 40 miles away. It was, yeah, it was a day and a half of... of I had to take life. a nap in Nordok's backpack. <laughs> yeah, you did, actually. <laughs> That's how long it was. It was arduous. <laughs> so, Ozzy, then. Um, let me get back to work, then. If you have questions, obviously, come and find me. I'll be with Pepper Jack for a bit, at least. <clears throat> Let's go introduce uh, Avar here to your father. Sure. See okay. if they... Uh, is that real or is that are you being fake? No, 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 no. I mean, like, really, he'd probably love oh. to have a, another person he get around to. That'd be nice. Books too. Avar and, can give him piggyback rides. <coughs> oh jeez. Because <laughs> he's small. What's <laughs> small? <laughs> <laughs> this kid's massive. Have you guys ever heard the? There's a tale I heard once. Um, it was a bard. He was. It's a very long story. It was uh, a fable of this. A uh, person who adopted this half giant without knowing it, but he turned out to be an incredible sports player, and he used this child's ability to to go very far into the top leagues of some sporting events and made his fame and fortune. It's What's the, the half league's name? Blind really? side? I think it was called the Blind oh, Side. Oh, I thought you were going with my giant. <laughs> the, 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 I think it was a Billy Crystal movie, if I remember yeah, that right. Was. <laughs> that shitty movie from like I don't uh, know, ninety two or something. We always blindside him. We always do the blindside story and make a, make money off of off of Avar here. What do you think about that? Playing sports, might be able to meet a king or two. Got ourselves a ringer. It'd, it'd be interesting. He'd fucking be amazing at it. Jousting. Oh, he can get him into jousting. He'll have to ride like what, an elephant, like a small. <laughs> Like he maybe a large jag drought, which you guys were gonna yeah. go, where you were looking for, and you never went to, never went to find him. One of the jag horses, remember? Uh, those ones would be nice. Anyways, I'm just thinking out loud. But uh, they won't let me. They won't let me play if I'm a yog, right? They'll be just. They'll just be afraid. No, fuck them. Well, you see, sometimes that works in your advantage when you're in sports. If they're afraid of you, they don't want to like tackle you or hit you. Yeah, you can look big and scary. You just don't want to be scary. So exactly. you can. It's fine. It, 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 people are gonna judge you, and people judge us. See how little we are. They yeah, think they're we're calling us weird names. Yeah. But no, it's fine. Once once people get to know you, and you'll get you'll get over it, and you'll be you'll be all right in the long run. Well, what do we do, now, Ozzy, Is there anyone here who? Um, Helps talk people through their emotional problems. <laughs> Might be like a therapist here. Ozzy, he was already turning to, to make his way towards the door to, to, to head back to uh, the commander, but like he, he kind of stops and gives a little sideways glance. Teacher. Um, no, we don't have a lot of children around to, uh, uh, you know, even, even entertain him, so I'm not sure really what you intend to have him do here, but and we'll sure all look after him as best we can, sure, but... As long as you keep him in the crow fort, he'll probably be safe. Well, we've got a, we've also got we've got the other three people. We got to make sure they're all. I'm guessing everyone who made it back to the little uh, keep, okay, from from the uh, frozen town. We had to send them off from. You mean the the people from Meadow Lake? I, the the blacksmith and yeah, I sent them back people. to I sent them back to the Empire already. 
Oh, they're right back to the Empire. Yeah, they're, they're in mist. I mean, I haven't heard since, but that's where, where we sent them was to mist so that they'd at least be safe from conflicts here. We didn't want to leave civilians here that can't you know, defend themselves or carry their weight. Perhaps we should do that with... Um, well, he's a boy. That's, we probably can't do that. What about getting him a bit of training? Yeah! You, you, you see his, his eyes, his eyes kind of widen up a little Let's bit. Let's train him. I know a guy who's got a terrible haircut that plays... Uh, <laughs> Used to play a <laughs> as you as you play twisting a your mustache. Show. Yeah, you twist your mustache a a show. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> I bet he could teach him some things. <laughs> uh, was that before Nazim joined? Talk yeah. about your remember, no, remember it, was, it was after. It was after okay. he joined. Yeah. When he Pogo gave, gave one of the court liners a really bad haircut. Made my wig and my <laughs> <laughs> my fucking. Tail. I think it was like right after I jumped in. Was it? Like yeah. really, really right after. Uh, convinced, one of, convinced one of the crow blinders to uh, let him shave his hair so that he could turn it into a mustache and a bad disguise. And a and a wig <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go get. Let's go introduce everyone. To, I bet Abraham's extra busy. I mean, he's he's got a he's got a house full of him and Theodore, and that's it. So yeah. <laughs> what, what about there? there? There's barely anyone. That's what I'm saying. He's uh, he's not very busy. There isn't really anything to do. So except no, for just Theodore. general. Also, he, well, he I, probably had to take care of those people for a day until they got sent back. Yeah, but that was still, you know, eleven days ago, and uh, yeah, eleven days ago. <clears throat> so he's had he's had a solid, you know, uh, long vacation. Uh, I did put walls in here, guys. I was still I was experimenting with with a thing in here that you guys will see. Um, I, I don't quite like how it turned out, but it's better than nothing. You guys can go ahead and move around in here. Uh, I didn't put them on the other floors yet, but go right in and. and uh, Go wherever you, wherever you want. There's a crow blinder. You, you've seen him around before. You don't know his name offhand, but there's a crow blinder standing uh, at, the, at the door when you guys enter. Welcome back. Close on the door every time I open some it. Some friendly faces. Yeah. Oh, somebody else is trying to get through. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, why Just why close the door behind there? yourself. <laughs> there we are. The doors are open, everyone. Don't worry. I'll get them. I'll hold them open. They. I didn't see anybody tinkering with them. They see. They should be fine. They should open. They I don't know why you they would just be closing them on you. Oh, I can't see shit. Oh, sorry. Hang on. I put I I didn't put lights inside, um, because it's both an indoor and an and an exterior space. There you go. You should be able to see inside now as well. All right. Well, I'm not going to summon Pietro again because he can't fit through the stupid magical portal. Uh, what time of day is it? On this. Uh, it anymore? is. So it was 9 a.m. So it's a little afternoon. It's like 12:30. Abraham! Because you moved, you moved three time zones east. So I'm just gonna be screaming Abraham <laughs> until he comes out to the middle area. Um, uh, you hear, you hear kind of a murmuring coming through the through the inside there, and then the door is open. Uh, y yes. I'm gonna go give uh, him a Master big. Is it? I'm gonna give him a big hug, and I'm gonna whisper in his ear, "Please bring me some wine, <laughs> strong wine, wine and it meat is. and cheese and bread." Don't we still have instant wine and bag? Bring it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to go sit down. It's probably, it's probably mostly vinegar, you know, by now. But I'm going to go... Super strong, right? one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that'll get you real fucked up. I'm going to go lay down on my back on top of the table in the kitchen. All right. Trying to bring me some wine and food. Uh, he, he goes downstairs. I'll go ahead and move you over. He goes downstairs. Uh, you should be able to see now, Justin, right? Did I know? Oh, I didn't put a light in that room, too. Uh, but yeah, it's no worries. I, I'm I'm using theater of the mind. <laughs> All right. There you go. Uh, so some okay. I probably didn't put enough. Then there will be some rooms that don't have proper lighting. Um, what I was tinkering with is this here. I'm gonna set it to dark real quick, guys. Um, I don't know if you guys will be able to click those. Maybe not. Yeah. Oh, windows! Yeah, I was trying to make windows, like working windows, where you could, you know, open and close the shutter and still be able to see in and out, uh, ha and have light coming in and everything. Uh, because I haven't done this yet, but the new um, version, I I'm, I'm going to try to move maybe before next week. I'm not sure, uh, but version nine, the new uh, big update, I'm moving it back today, uh, has a bunch of adjustments to the lighting to make uh, like those. You see how those have very sharp edges on them, mm -hmm. like they're, you know, a perfect cone, it's like uh, perfect kind of triangles. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It diffuses those on the edges, so it actually looks much more natural. I really like how it looks, and I wanted to have you know functional uh, effects for it because it basically it improves performance for them too. So they actually have basically no uh, performance hit or very minimal. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about how it'll work. But there's some things like I didn't I didn't get those lights quite lined up the way that I wanted them to and stuff. So anyway. <clears throat> Uh, Abraham, though, as you are <laughs> uh, relaxed on the table, does uh, bring up a, a platter in, uh, in a uh, amphora uh, and sets them on the on the table. Um, do you want me to bring you a pillow? No, I am great where I'm at. Abraham, when you were yep. a kid, what did you want to do? What was your goal? What thing did you want to do when you were older? I wanted to be a soldier, and, and so I was for some time. Do you feel like you've accomplished everything you want to accomplish in your life? He shrugs a little bit. I, I wouldn't say I'm, that I'm sure I did, but I, I think I did okay for myself. That's you good. hear you hear small footsteps coming through the through the side door over there. Uh, uh, Sarah, you see uh, your father running through the door, uh, and he kind of rushes in, in his very uh, slow, ambulatory, still, um, still like he's probably still in some pain he's still recovering a little bit from the, the time he spent with the torturer uh as he rushes over to you to give you a big hug you made it back yeah we're good uh i don't know if ozzy told him we were fighting legion so i'm just gonna message who's in the room artemy and pogo uh just you guys here in your heads do not tell him we fought legion <laughs> you're so cold what why are you so cold but we had to go up on this really high mountain where it was snowing really bad so we could bury uh, Norox shaman? I don't even know if bury is yes. the right word. <laughs> well, he's he's like kind of pulling you he's pulling you towards the fire. Uh, uh, Mr. Pogo, do you mind if he if he sits down next to you by the by the fire there? Oh, it's fine. She's I'm just, freezing. I'm, I'm eating as as much. I'm shoving <laughs> cheese and meat and bread in my mouth, and I'm washing it down with wine. I'm uh, I mean, it's... go ahead. Part of it. I'm I'm gonna um, ask Abraham since he was the soldier if he could train Avar with uh, weapons. Oh, but they're gone. You know, uh, when you ask, he gives, um, there, there's kind of a, a, a very brief flash of, of like unexpected, like he was clearly surprised by the question, um, and then a, a very big smile. I, I would be, I'd be happy to, I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm quite rusty and we're surrounded by men far better prepared to do such a thing, but I'd, I'd absolutely be happy to. Oh, maybe we should Where's bring this, him Where's this Avar? Get him some food. Who's, yeah, we should bring him in here. He's, uh... Yeah, I'm we Is this little guy? Or this big guy? This guy? Who is this where's, where's the food? He's just out there with Norok. And I'm Zim. hiding I'm hiding all my food on the other side. <laughs> 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 it's in here, dude. This is my food. <laughs> I am I am pretty hungry. <laughs> he steps in behind Norok. And he kind of stands in the corner, kind of sheepishly, like he's not really sure what to do. <clears throat> over here if you want and come out of seat. And speaking of training, Dad, would you mind maybe like, I don't know, teaching him some stuff? Like actual school stuff? I was not much one for it, but uh, I mean, I can I can certainly try. Who is who, who is the boy, if you don't mind me asking? His name's Avar. He was in a frozen city along with the other people we sat here. And yeah, he just came with us to do the burial rites and then we brought him back. He, <clears throat> he introduces himself. Uh, Avar is very shy. I'm going to go ahead and point out something that, that uh, all of you, I'm going to say especially Nazim actually notices that um, he, Avar seems very uh, separated all of a sudden. Like he's very quiet, very shy, where he had started to kind of, kind of uh, you know, warm up to you guys. Now, especially in mixed company where these, these people that he don't know or doesn't know are here, um, he seems extremely like unsure of himself and shy uh nazim you recognize probably this in Norak as well that, that he's not sure what to like how to react to other people now that he feels like he's different after learning that he's part yog yeah okay yeah this is the impression that you get <clears throat> um but he's he's like very cautiously uh you know like like handshakes uh theodore but like 
doesn't squish down his hand, things like that. Where he's not his really people sure skills are very tested. Yeah, like he's exactly like he's just all of a sudden been very like broken and awkward. Um, the re I would point out specifically that that would be below the passive because uh, Nazim, with your um, uh, entertainer history, Pogo would as well, but Pogo's busy stuffing his face and hiding his food. Uh, 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 that the very subtle uh, uh, kind of with specifically the grifter uh, point of it is is recognizing kind of the body language of, of him being very uh, awkward and not sure what to do in the situation. But he does, uh, you know, accept the, the greeting, and he sits down, um, and he kind of quietly, at, where's the food to, to Norak? <laughs> I'm really uh, hungry. Abraham, do you have anything uh, for us over here, especially for a little dude? Uh, of, of course, I, I didn't have time to, you know, prepare anything, but um, I, can, I can bring more meat and bread, um, and then I can make some eggs or something if you guys would like. I'm gonna, uh, yeah. pour, I'm gonna pour Avar a big glass of wine and give it to him. Very good, big boy. Honestly, he probably yeah. metabolize it faster than Pogo, anyways. So. Yeah. You're gonna get a child drunk now. <laughs> well, it's that's what I'm saying. Like, like we're in a safe place. It's better yeah. he does it at home than out in the wild. <laughs> oh jeez, I'm gonna go find some uh, chicken stuff and make some stuff. You're going going down to the kitchen with uh with Abraham then. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what are you? Oh, are you trying to get to the other side of the table? All right. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> so you like jump out of the table, jump it up. Uh, grab your token, uh, pick it up. So like click and drag, and then hold down shift. So pick up your token, hold down shift, and then drop it where you want it to be. So you can drop it like right on. You know. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. It, it skips the little squares. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then then it won't snap to a square. You can move it mm -hmm. to a specific location that way. <laughs> That's how you like jumping back and forth on the table. I didn't know what you were trying to do. Um, I'm just right. gonna I'm just gonna read him for a little bit, Avar. I'm not really interacting, but I'm just gonna kind of keep her close an eye on him. So now that we, um, he's kind of asking quietly. Now that we're like here and everything is safe, and and the dragon isn't gonna get us and everything, will you tell me about that bird? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bird you ever told her about. <laughs> He's asking Nazim specifically. All right. We're just a bird. We're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna play this game again. All right. Um, you you captured a child's imagination with this this bird that clawed your face down somehow and left it all fucked up. So, hey, hey, Bart, do you like books? Yeah, I like books. I've got a tome here if you want to read it. What is it? What's it about? <laughs> I figured that's what you were going to show him. Uh, he won't be able to read it anyways, you know that, but uh, are you actually letting him, like, you know, like you're pulling it out and putting it on the table? Uh, I'm just going to have him take a look at it. Uh, I may or may not have him read it. <laughs> I, it looks it looks like it'd be too hard for me to, to read. I don't know if I could read this. What's it about? Is this where you learned about that bird? It tells you all about the bird. Maybe someday I'll let you read it. I heard it's the word. <laughs> well, every, everybody's heard. <laughs> don't, don't fucking start. I absolutely <laughs> hate the How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, and, that, and by not even kidding, that fucking, uh, like, I haven't watched uh, Family Guy for a long time, but that fucking episode <laughs> of Family Guy so annoying like I, I i can't see like i even just the first time watching it it was like nails on a chalkboard it was, it was too annoying so i kept skipping ahead skip ahead three minutes and yet it's still going skip ahead another three minutes it's still fucking going like it's half the goddamn episode is a stupid song mm -hmm. anyway they did, it, they did it three more times too <laughs> um, but uh yeah uh maybe someday i'll let you read this and it'll tell you all about the bird and everything can't you just tell me about the bird oh it's a very special book You'll have to read it for yourself. You might but, not uh, want to read not, that. Not right now. But maybe right. later. Maybe maybe sometime soon. Okay. Uh, where do I, where do I learn where do I learn how to read it? Because those the, the, I can't read those squiggles. I don't recommend reading that book. Did you read it? Is it just too scary? No, no. But if it you know did that to him, you may not want that to happen to you. Oh, reading it would do that? I thought it was a bird that did it. Is oh, no. the book a bird? 
<laughs> the, the book could definitely tells you about he's looking at he's looking it's at a story it. Abraham you got your work cut out for you buddy <laughs> it's you Theodore <laughs> <laughs> he's a dumb kid right <laughs> is this a butterfly <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but I'm not, I'm not I'm not judging you I'm judging the public school system it's failed you <laughs> Let's see if that actually works. I don't think it will. I think the file's too big. I uh, just dropped it in Discord. Nope. You guys see that in Discord? No? Uh, it says that you're typing. Yeah. Okay. I tried dropping it. Did you press enter? Oh, hang on. Do I... There we go. Yep. That was all I need to do. Thanks, Fox. Oh, good. It's not as big as I thought it was going to be. <coughs> oh, God damn it! It's really loud. So I, I had intended to... Uh. I cut the music off. Uh, or cut, I tried to cut the audio off, and it didn't work. Um, <laughs> that audio was weird. Yeah, so, so all it was supposed to be was just animated avatars. I took you guys' avatars and, and made little videos from them. Um, it's just a just a thing, uh, a little, little uh, web app thing. Uh, there's one, like the Pogo one is really cool, but it's too big. Um, <clears throat> but I have to trim the others off um, and, and get rid of the audio. I thought that was kind of cool. <clears throat> I think Sako sent that, if I remember right, of like a an NPC image or something before, where where yeah. it's just an animated. You can uh, just superimpose people's face over anything and it animates it. Yeah, um, but theoretically, I could get that small enough that you'd be able to have it. Not that it would matter necessarily, but for a portrait, I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, that file size is about there, but if I if I trim the audio out of it, it would be you know maybe half that size even, which is pretty cool. Um, anyways, though, um, the the. Uh, back and forth about the the book being a bird and so on there what is um uh uh well i guess pogo's eating but what is um what's sarah doing in norok uh i'm gonna get some food and some wine and then i'm gonna see if corin santalus read what i wrote him and at least let him know that we made it back okay um you pull out the scroll then uh are you I'm tired and I don't care. I'm just okay. I was gonna, that's exactly what I was going to ask. Are you being surreptitious about this or just pulling it out and, and reading nope. it in front of everybody? All right, I'm just going to read it. <clears throat> All right, um, you pull the scroll out uh, and there is new text on it. Uh, it was blank the last time you had looked, uh, meaning that he had read the last message, of course, and then has, has since replied. Uh, it says, "My apprentice, through great effort, I have broken the vernacularian bulwark in the scrolls you gave me on the Caliodoran." It has been long centuries since I last felt such excitement over what amounts to research, but nonetheless, I'm glad for it and for the opportunities this breakthrough represents. How fair your studies. Are you practiced in the channeling schematic I sent previous? Copy the below aphorism, and when you aren't wasting time on frivolous endeavors like hiking mountains, commit this to memory. Its purpose will become clearer when you've reached the tower. And beneath that is a... I'll, I'll give you the text of that if you need it. I will um, scribble it down as fast as I can, whatever... Okay. Yeah, so so below that uh, is a, a somewhat simple uh, magical diagram in uh, in design, somewhat simple in design. Uh, and at a cursory glance, at first you think this is just a spell that you're already familiar with, uh, as it employs mostly the same runic architecture as the spell Misty Step, uh, only inverted. Um, and and it's, you know you look at it for a moment, you realize this is this is inverted; it's done backwards somehow. Uh, you can tell it wouldn't require very much arcane energy to employ, but the more you look over the inscription, you realize how clever it is. That it's it's exceptionally uh, precise, but uh, but but simple enough that you feel like you could do this with minimal energy. I Meaning it's a level one spell, uh, if properly mastered. However, uh, it would allow you to bookmark your place in the world and have a brief window of time to move and then act as you as you choose, and then you can complete mm. the channeling to return yourself to where you began the incantation. Sweet. That could be useful. And I will just write back. Well, our frivolous endeavor is complete as far as we know. We killed Legion, so yay us. Um, yeah, and my studies are going well. Okay. <laughs> and we're just gonna leave it at that, even though okay. she's only, like halfway through learning the other one. Sure. Uh, by the the way that it was written, you don't feel like he had expected you already had, had you know mastered that previous one. He just needed you to also have this one ready. Um, there was another. There was a, a note that you missed in the middle there, um, and I don't remember which day it was. Uh, it's one that you you had asked. Um, remember? Well, I told you this, but when you had asked about one, yeah, like three or four days ago. Like... Yeah, yeah, exactly. There was there was a note in there where he had told you uh, about this breakthrough specifically, and what it was is that. Um, he he learned the, the the abyssal gate 
spell, the, the, the kind of ver the, the altered version that was on those ancient scrolls, is not just to open a gate, but rather to relocate an existing gate. Um, basically to take the, an end point or a start point and move it from one location to another, um, uh, which doesn't matter to you. It doesn't make any sense to Sarah why that would be important or why that would be useful, but he was very excited with that revelation. Um, and that's what he was talking about right there. Oh, and I'm glad the scroll came in handy. You can tell him that too? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, Alright, guys. Well, I'm feeling a lot better. A little wine, a little bread and cheese in my belly. <laughs> so are what we, do we what do we do now? Well, you are going to train with the sword and learn a, that a book's not a bird from Theodore. You guys turn into things. You turn into to a mammoth. We walked up the mountain on 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 you guys as mammoths. If if you can do that, then a bird can be a book. Hey, he's got a point. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate this kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> you could think of we may have messed him up, guys. He might not. <laughs> Uh, have a weird life. It'll be fine. <laughs> have a weird life. All right. Ooh. Well, there's. A, I mean, I feel like we should take a day. Let's take a day. At least. But we can talk about where we want to go and what we want to do. So there's a few things that have been rolling around in my head now that I can. Now I'm warmed up and my bones don't ache from the freeze. We never figured out or know what happened to Clover. We just know that thing came back pretending to be her and where yeah, it well, came from, she probably is. Yeah, well, that's, you know, in the capital. She went to the capital, apparently she never came back, so. See, that's what's strange, right? Why, why is, why is the, like, I didn't really think about it till now, but why would the capital be sending that creature back? Or do you think it's a spy working for the... No, I have a theory that it's, wasn't the yeah, it wasn't the right hand man of the King of Amber or whatever questionable. We don't like that for some like yeah. It's a woman. Wait, wait, wait. Right hand <laughs> of who are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, no, it was a woman. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, the one that, that... was uh, advice of <laughs> the one that yes. Clover went to go investigate. Oh, there yeah, you go. Investigate. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So that's that's exactly what we're gonna... investigate. Yep. Yeah, you're getting you're getting right back to the point there. Um, so the conversation about when you guys were basically being sent out onto the specific mission you were going to, and and you chose to go to um, to Gwyn Sarah instead, um, and then Sarah or I'm sorry, Clover had gone to the Empire. She went specifically back to Mist. She was gone, and Norok noticed that she was kind of fingering her knife a little bit. Remember, yeah. When when this was mentioned specifically about. Um, uh, uh, the uh, Emperor's uh, advisor, essentially, you could say. So, I mean, we've got that looming over us, and I, I mean, I'm not terribly close friends with her, but she seems like an important person here, and I don't know if that's something we want to try to do, and how, when do you have to get back to your what is it, magic that's, school thing? That's, I mean, technically it's a little while away, I did tell him I'd do it as soon as I could, but I also still have to study this crap that he just sent me, so... I'll I mean, have to study. But I also want to go into town to get some more spells, or original spells, so I don't have to have so much prepared. We'll do that at the capital. Yeah, that's the, the whole capital. point. You also have to get that broom fixed. You can probably do that there, too. Yeah. There, there's a few things I think in the bag that we need to get curses removed from too. Yeah, probably. Theodore That's speaks not... up. That you guys are heading to the capital. Like I don't, I don't want to stay here forever. Can I, can I go too? I mean, it might be a safe place for them. It might it's even be a safe place for you too. And I'm gonna kind of point to Avar. I mean, if. But I thought they were going to teach me how to use a sword and that a book is not a bird. Well, they have schools and they have, you know, city guards and stuff that I'm sure you could learn that stuff in the capital. You don't have to be here to learn that stuff. 
he kind of he's quiet. He doesn't know what to what to say. I mean, and you don't have to go back by yourself. My dad would be going back with you. So at least you wouldn't be alone. We could go visit you. Perhaps there's a fantasy Costco there. You could be a door greeter. <laughs> <laughs> fantasy Costco. Where all your dreams come true. Welcome to Fantasy <laughs> Costco. I love you. It's <laughs> uh, idiocracy, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Future documentary. It's good. Yep. Pretty close in front. I mean, it's something to think about. I'd be open to it, Theodore. Who says? It would be safer than and it keeps surrounded by a dead army. That was really, don't get me wrong, I, I feel plenty safe here, and, you know, Abraham may be getting on in, in years, but he still seems to, to wield that, that butcher knife, that kitchen knife, a lot more um, uh, talented than you might expect. Yeah, just, uh, I don't recommend going home. There's, there's a clear, sad look on his face. It's clear that, it, you know, his his wife, your mother, uh, yeah. his betrayal is still weighing heavy on him. Oh, you could do better. <laughs> no, you could do so much better. <laughs> just, home is going to be the first place they look. And yeah. They're not just going to give up the fact that we you know, broke you out of there. There seems to be a lot of, from what I've heard, and granted this is coming from, you know, third, fourth, tenth hand for all I know, but it seems to be a lot of trouble uh, in the Jutheran church at the moment anyway. So with any luck, maybe it'll dissolve itself or, or calm down once the, the zealots and the fascists you know, are, are overthrown or die off or whatever needs to happen. And then we can get our home rebuilt the way that it should be. That would be nice. That's the best case scenario. Well, I need the love of strangers, so yeah, I'm going to go grab my instrument, and I'm going to go sing a song and try to cheer up the soldiers who have been working tirelessly here back at okay. the crow board. You're getting to the crow's nest then? Yep, the I'm, I'm verbally telling everyone that I'm going to do that. So okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to restring, <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit better, it's been a couple weeks, I'm feeling more... Going to go grab your banjo out of your room? I'm going to go grab my banjo out of my room, re restring it with the string I dis distached, detached. And I am going to go to the mess area. And yeah, I know it's, it's a gross really, mess. Yeah, it's, it's middle of the day, so it might not be a lot of people, but I gotta, I gotta go get some attention. <laughs> All right, All right. Um, you, you know, making your way out through the um, uh, through the courtyard and around the, the central keep until you make your way over the crow's nest. It is quiet. Uh, there is, you know, smoke billowing out of the. Um, out of the chimney, but um, it actually feels warm for some reason, and, and you realize it's just because of how cold, just like to your bones cold, it has been for you know that you've been climbing the mountain and everything uh, for so long that this, but like the the aberrant temperature here, uh, ambient temperature rather, um, is although still very cold, is not nearly the, the kind of bone chill uh, that you had there. So it seems almost brisk as you make your way over. On my uh, short rest while I'm eating food and relaxing there, I'm also going to re. Uh, uh, I'm going to use my hat. I'm going to reattach my hat of disguise for a two minute. Okay. Take off my. Yeah, uh, go, go ahead. And, yeah, you can adjust your attendance. Yeah. <clears throat> um, all right. Uh, speaking of, Avar still has boots. No, is it the boots? Yeah. Just giving the ring. Or... No, it is the boots. Yeah, he has the boots. Yeah. Um, he he kind of. Okay, uh, yeah. but I, I left. Mine on the on the mountain. I I would have. I will. You know what? Wear them for right now. I will go get you some more boots. Okay, and then I will get the Elven ring. Went to Norok, right? Was his? Uh, yeah, that was mine. All right, so I'm gonna give this back to you. All right, and there's my clever. Uh, he did I take that out of your inventory? You might still have it in your. I might mean, still have it in my inventory or something, but I'd like yeah. to. Just didn't take it off because then I'd forget. Yeah, I put them. Um, the boots are are actually in Avar's inventory, so I'll go ahead and move those over real quick. Uh, I actually have them still on. My oh, yeah, well now you have to. 
<laughs> it's funny how easily it is to duplicate boots, apparently. <laughs> um, so I'll just I'll run out and ask the soldier that was in the front if he knows where I can find some an extra pair of boots for you know, an eleven year old young child. Uh, you mean the boy that, that walked in with you? Yep, he needs some new boots. Using mine. His, his, feet, his feet are probably bigger than mine. Um, the good news is, I mean, if, if those a child, his, his feet are probably large enough that he could wear any of ours. So if you head over to the commissary, uh, I'm sure the supply master can grab them for you. Thank you, and I will go do that. I'll grab them some. <clears throat> All right. Uh, you you know that that's essentially where the quarter the, the quartermaster is in the crow's nest, uh, which is where Pogo is headed. So you're you know fifty feet behind him, walking around the the courtyard, heading that way. Wait, I've got that one. The quartermaster's oh. name is Wilson, and the yeah, mistress Rook. is Rook. Yep. Uh, which you guys know Rook is also the one that uh, has a, a big crush on, well, the one who Pepper now Jack. hates Sarah. Uh, not on Pepperjack, on Quill. But yeah. the last time that Sarah went to see Quill asking questions, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, she had seen Sarah leaving the room and thought uh, Sarah was there for a different reason. Uh, no. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> terrible misunderstanding. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, uh, what is everybody else doing? I've Artemis, finished, you're down cooking. Yeah, yeah I'm going to finish, once I finish cooking, I'm going to bring the food to the and give our grab myself some, then go up to my room to check on my uh, batonical and, or batonics? I, I'm not sure how to do it. And then your what? My, your, your what and your what? Uh, the plants I was growing mm. and the leather. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, you're making your way up there. What are Norok and uh, Nazim doing? Uh, Avar, Avar is, you know, Artemay brought food, so, you know, he's, he's munching it down very rapidly. Grabbing his hunger for a kid. I'm gonna quietly uh, eat the blandest food on the table, be it bread <laughs> and water. <laughs> and uh, actually, I think I might head back up to my little, my little bed slash room area. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have and uh, I do want to just take a few minutes and read over that tome, personally, myself. Okay. Your own tome? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, right we'll, we'll come back to that in just a moment then. Uh, Norok? Um, while we're sitting there eating and stuff, I'm going to talk to Avar and tell him that I know it's kind of hard to be different, and especially if you think you're intimidating, but two things you can do to kind of, you know, help let people realize that you're not so scary number one is learn to smile at people because that definitely catches them off guard and number two be polite say please and thank you every time somebody does something for you they won't be nearly as scared of you buddy okay i think i can do that i i, I don't remember to smile a lot especially yeah, when i don't either when, but i'll try yeah it's a it's a good diffuser so you know what's mostly scary is a person's attitude not so much the way they look so if you don't act scary towards people, they probably won't find you that way once they get to know you. I'll, I'll just throw a very horrifying smile his way like I'm really <laughs> trying to smile. <laughs> Tell him, <laughs> not like that. Not like that. <laughs> that's, that's where you learn. That's not the smile. No. Thank you, Nazim. Appreciate it, man. It doesn't always work. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Uh, Pogo and Sarah, give me perception checks. Uh, by the way, the the um, the advisor that the advise uh, uh, Simon Caius, the, the emperor, uh, is Zimra, is the woman that uh, Clover was. That, that you guys feel like she was sent to, not necessarily kill, but maybe kill. You don't know. What Found was you just throw Zimra, Z R Z I M R A H. I put it in the in the chat there too. Did Foundry freeze for you guys? It's. I'm still not there. yet, but yeah, it's completely no. frozen on my side. Like the the server's still running oh, fine, good. and the client side's running fine. But my it might just be Chrome. Let me see. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll go down for you guys or not. So one second. Our balls are showing up too. Okay. You guys want to take five while we reload? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I gotta yeah, get a lot in us. Right. Okay, guys, get back. Step away for a minute. Go grab I some bland food and punch a bird in the face. <laughs> All right.
Hello. I'm excited to get my uh, index all set up and configured, but I was, I don't know, I'm not disappointed. It's, it's not, disappointed isn't, isn't fair, but it's the only word that I can uh, think of at the moment. But <clears throat> just, a bad game. Like, that's a really, that's probably one of my, it's definitely my favorite AAA VR title. Like, a lot of the my, games are fun, but they're not AAA. You know, they're like arcade type games where you just play yeah. through it. That's it. Is like I, I didn't want to try something that was like a throwaway, like garbage title kind of thing. That's that was kind of the impression of a lot of uh, VR games. Um, not like the you know the good AAA ones for sure. But anyway, I, I think it was probably just a bad choice for the very first game to try in it because it, it one it's a game that I know in and out. I know every bit of that game, you know, um, and it's eleven years old. So and I didn't monitor anything first, so it looks old as well. So none of that was super impressive. I only had the, the very brief, you know, kind of wow moment uh, at the start of it because it starts you in this little tutorial area to teach you how to move mm-hmm. and shit. Um, and and that was cool looking up and like having the cave being that high and the waterfall and shit. That was cool. So but. there's the two ways to move where you hold it down and it walks or the teleport. Or the yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do the, I don't like the snap because it feels like I'm cheating. Yeah, I can't. I can't because it like that. snaps, because it snaps. Like, let's say uh, uh, something's attacking you. You can snap 10 feet away, and now you can look at the thing 10 feet away that has to run to your location. Oh, like shit, it, really? It doesn't, yeah. I guess that makes sense. It wouldn't be able to do it any other exactly. way. Exactly. Yeah. There's no other way for it to process it. So yeah. um, it just seems, it really takes you out of it, like when yeah. you use the snap motion. The problem is, apparently, a lot of people get nauseous using the normal motion. Um, I don't get nauseous, but after a couple hours, I have like stumbled, like <laughs> where I almost like trip over something that's not actually there. I didn't play. Oh, I was just fucking. Like, I'm, I'm not kidding at all, dude. I've just been fucking like dead exhausted for probably you know four or five days. Like this feels like I haven't slept at all, even though it's been three or four hours a night. But um, anyway, it's just you know I was just sitting in a chair when I was playing because I didn't want to try standing up, and then because I hadn't played much in VR, so I kind of expected that it would have some weird uh, disorienting you know movement kind of like vertigo type stuff, and and I didn't have any of that it didn't bother me at all but i was sitting in a chair though so maybe maybe standing for too long i would but the 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 part of the is first of all it's like i didn't have it dialed in at all i didn't basically i didn't look at like how you know to adjust uh any of the vision or anything so everything was super blurry because i didn't know what to do like i should have you know just you know set it up properly basically before i even tried um so everything was was incredibly blurry because I didn't have the IPD set right. Um, I didn't have the help the back part. Like I couldn't get the the thing on my head. I literally had to pull it open. Like like felt like it was gonna break it uh, to get it on my head. Um, and then but I, you know there's a knob on the back to loosen it so that you can do that. I just didn't know. I did you know I should have been more patient basically and, and you know given it a better shot. And I probably wouldn't have been so disappointing. But it was a little bit let down that. You know, I've, I've partially was again. It's completely my fault that I was in a rush to start that, and I probably shouldn't have started on an eleven-year-old game, ten-year-old uh, game. Yeah, it was, well, it'll be eleven in you know ten months. But anyways, uh, you know th- th- that kind of stuff. Like I could have tried it on something a little more uh, newer and, and probably better representative of the uh, haptic feedback and things like that. And Skyrim, what game was this? Uh, Skyrim, it's the only one that I tried in, in VR so far. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I spent about an hour and a half of it yesterday. Yeah, Skyrim VR. It's, it's the, the VR one that I was playing. Um, <clears throat> but I didn't load any mods or anything with it, so when I do that, I'm sure it'll be a lot more uh, you know, immersive and fun. This is just a floating hands thing, and that bothers me. That kind of stuff. We need a haptic. <laughs> we need a haptic, uh, full-body haptic suit. They need to have yeah. a haptic suit that's like 400 bucks or cheaper. That's what the, I need. The weight thing I was telling you about that bothers me too, and that's something that you know will have to be modded in, or or games that don't have that will you know I just won't enjoy them as much, especially if they have any kind of melee, or at least if they're melee combat focused, uh, because there's just no like. Imagine if you pick up you know a, a you know a heavy uh, uh, you know chunk of rebar or something like that, or a hammer. Let's say a hammer, right? You pick up like a hammer for hammering a nail, regular mm-hmm. you know hammer. It's weighted at one end. Momentum. And, yeah, and there's momentum and there's inertia, and and if you hit something, it doesn't pass through it. It needs to, you know, it needs to to and feel it like it's impacting something. Yeah, and it there. doesn't mimic the motions of when you use the controller, and you're like, huh? ah, and like yeah, it's there slow. are yeah. some uh, LARPing mods that you can add onto it. Like I actually use for when I play Autica, there are these uh, 3D printed guns that you slide your controllers in. Yeah. and uh, it gives the proper way for the gun feeling but uh, there are some LARPing mods so you can put like a stick which has yeah, the way it's not, feel, like a small short sword 
That's just a fun way to destroy something in your house, too. <laughs> yeah, just swing it into your wall or your TV or something. Really wearing um, a, well, actually, does yours, yours has the one with the camera attached, so you can put it onto see-through mode, too, right? Yeah, yep. yeah nah. pass through. Faster, um, but like, could you imagine in the living room playing VR and you've got something that has the like at least like eight pounds like to weigh down like like a like oh a my poor dog, half tall, <laughs> yeah, like dog, slumping yeah, a dog, fucking, yeah. blood everywhere. Yeah, I don't need a, a a physical. I don't care. Like, so so when I said haptic feedback, I'm just referring to that there should be a, even a small vibration, anything to show that the software recognizes that A connected with B. You know what I mean? Uh, something like that is fine. But more importantly, your your representation of your hand or your arm should be represented in a in a flow state that represents the heft of whatever it is that you're trying to wield. So if you're if you're swinging a knife, that's fine. That you can you can spin your wrist around and that's fine. But when you, when it's a fucking great sword and you can literally just flick your wrist back and forth and it'll hit them five times, that's stupid. Like that isn't that won't be fun to me no matter how the game tries to, to dictate that. If it counts those as individual hits, which Skyrim does, and again, I, I shouldn't have tested this on a ten year old game. I should have tried something, you know, a little more um, modern that was built specifically to handle a VR system. Um, then I could get a, a you know a better feel for it. But it just it, it isn't fun to me that literally you can just you know take a take you know what is supposed to be a great sword in one hand and just wiggle your wrist left and right slightly like a half inch each direction and it counts it as five hits or something. Like that. Like no. Beat Saber, it weighs absolutely nothing. I haven't played Beat Saber yet. I bought it. Uh, in fact, actually, that's why I bought the whole kit was to play that with a friend um, that, it, that it was really enjoying Beat Saber. So I bought it, you know, so I could try that as multiplayer. Um, yeah. Beat Saber and Autica are pretty much the go tos when it comes to just. Uh, kind what of is Autica? I haven't heard of that at all. Is that, it's is that similar or something? Uh, similar to Beat Saber, however, it's with guns, so you shoot moving targets that fly through the air. And There's a lot of games. Well. Yeah, there's a lot of games like that. Some yeah. of them are free, and they are, that one's the best. A lot of them are very fun. <laughs> What's the name of it? Autica. Autica. I gotta try that one. A U D I C A. Yeah. Okay. Really, really good, and the sound, the song library is fantastic. It's awesome. You can also uh, mod it too, I think. Um, what was I gonna say? Rhythm shooter. Okay. Yeah, All right, check that, that one. Out. Like oh, d uh, there's one where it's a supposed to be a super realistic military style like shooter game. Mm -hmm. It's called um, in something in <laughs> it's it pisses me off because it's too realistic. You gotta like grab a clip off your belt and then like with your left trigger use the button to release the clip and then put the clip in the right spot. Yeah, but that's what I want. Oh, I don't. No, yeah, it's, it's clunky though. It's if I'm way... gonna be playing VR, I want it to be as immersive as possible. I want to be Probably. for Skyrim, for example. I want to be like like freezing to death while playing that that kind of yeah, stuff. It's, it's bad because where the controller like it's. So I'll give you a great example. When you go to load the clip, depending on what gun you have, one controller is banging into the other controller. Oh, that kind of yeah. nonsense. It's got to be perfect. It can't just be like, like I would get it if it had to be like within a couple inches and then you let go. But I'm yeah. talking, you got to get it in the slot and then okay. let it off. Ugh. So, so because at least so far, and I'll probably get better at this, but at least so far the controllers are super awkward because I can't reach those fucking buttons that I was telling you about. Because you know I, I can't, like I literally have to take my right hand to press the one on the, on the left controller with my right thumb because I can't, my thumbs can't reach it. My hands are too big. So to even get those, like I keep banging the controllers together on, you know, carefully, obviously, but I keep kind of, you know, when I'm having to reach over to hit the other controller with my other hand, uh, I keep hitting them together. So that would definitely get troublesome trying to put a clip in. All right. <clears throat> Everybody back? Yes. Mm -hmm. Fox? No Fox yet? All right. We'll come back to Fox once she's, she's, uh, checking on her plants and leathers anyways. Uh, as far as that perception check, um, Sarah, you know, in, in the uh, mental state of, yeah, of, of uh, <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, one, you know, just going over that first, that initial scroll in your head, trying to, to you know, figure out the mechanics of it. Um, it. You know, you're just kind of distracted and focused on that. Now he's giving you another one, although you feel like this other one will probably be pretty easy. Um, you're, you're not uh, paying too much attention. But Pogo, in this kind of relief this kind of weight off your shoulders moment of this kind of vaguely brisk thankfully like it should still be freezing cold but again because of the uh you know what you've been used to uh being almost nice this kind of you know uh, uh, light step that you've got uh trudging through the snow uh you look up and you notice that that for the first time in what seems like months although it's probably realistically been about one month three or four weeks or so uh since you've seen a clear sky uh you look up and see that there's still this this uh 
uh, you know, circle directly above you that is just a deluge of constant snow, you know, pelting out from it, cold and snow. But once you look away from that ring, imagine like having a circular roof that's that's right above the keep. But as soon as you look out towards the horizon, you can see that there's a clear sky. Does that make sense? Yep. So um, you look out and see uh, like a, a nice, bright, clear sky. It's sunny out, uh, you know, as soon as you're looking out towards the horizon a little ways. Uh, and you see for the first time in a while uh, the, the, the kind of broken ring of Indris, the moon that was that was shattered from, from balance from the past erudition. Um, and these kind of glittering chunks of it still floating around. Um, the, the largest chunk, uh, which you, you know is called the Tear of the Moon, um, is still uh, it's still up in the in the in the sky, but it's it's closer now. It's it's closer towards like there's this kind of um, uh, navigate uh, uh, orbital pull, let's say, um, uh, of this this like ring. Like as an it's pull. Yeah, I mean the same way that a moon would orbit. You know, it still has the momentum of that orbit, and the added you know the addition to it being the ship that had crashed into it kind of added to that orbit, uh, and basically just the the the, the largest chunk. Of at least you know, large chunk that you see on this side of the planet, anyways, is just near. It's moving further north. It's coming up from from the south, moving this direction, uh, not fast or anything. It's just you know. How does the uh, how, well? Oh no, I, I'm not. I haven't gone anywhere where I can see it. Never mind. Okay. Mm, that could have been a relevant question. Well, I was going to say because I can't see from where I'm at. I was going to look at the army surrounding the base to see if it still looks. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, no, you can't see from where you're at. From from what Ozzy said, it sounds like they're definitely still there and you know getting more and more aggressive. Uh, yeah. yeah, you can't see them uh, physically. Uh, but anyways, um, the, the two of you making your way towards the uh, towards the crow's nest. Um, we'll come back to you guys in just a minute, uh, just because it would take you a minute to get there. Uh, Fox, you back? No Fox yet. All right. Um, Nazim, you make your way back up to um, to your room then and, and settle down. Um, flipping through the tome, is there anything specific that you're looking for? What, what are you trying to find there? Uh, pretty much just reviewing the book to see if there's anything that uh, might jog my memory or anything that uh, may assist me with my uh, personal quest. Okay. Hmm. In other words, trigger something. Yeah. Sit, sitting in silence, almost in meditation, and this okay. is my... Uh, my moment of reflection and growth. Um, give me. Um, I want I want you to be able to add your proficiency, but I don't know which stat would probably be best uh, reference. So it'll be it'll be a history check, but we'll just add your proficiency check uh, uh, manually. So go ahead and roll a history check, and okay. then we'll we'll have to come back to it here in a second. So it'll be your roll plus five. Sure. There's the roll there. All right, we'll come back to you in just a minute then for that. Uh, you, you sit down to read. Um, it is very dense, and, and even reading, you know, a couple of, like, even reading a paragraph takes a few minutes because you have to reread it over and over again to kind of understand what this uh, this very alien language is intending to be uh, describing um, because, the, the you know, the, the, the sentence structure is completely wrong. The, the uh, sense of... Um, uh, time is completely wrong and that parts are, are happening before that should be happening later things like that uh so it's just it's very complicated and, and uh you know has to be reread a few times before you really grasp what their intent is uh so we'll come back to to what you gather from that here shortly fox you back yep i'm back uh you in uh checking on your leathers and the plants you're growing the poison uh and the mushrooms right so what you were working on um i had a few things in uh, which so you you definitely were growing some mushrooms the ones that you guys yeah. had pulled out yeah uh, what whoever else were wanted you some mushrooms uh, I was growing anything that could be of use like for either of the teas okay okay um, let's see it would have been nearly two weeks so you would see sprouts by now for sure the mushrooms uh, have have grown pretty well like they're already you know harvestable you can pull a decent chunk out of those uh, herbs. Um, the, the kinds you would use for your red mint tea, for example, uh, and somnolent and stuff like that. Those take a little longer to grow. You probably would need another week to two weeks before you could actually harvest a usable amount from them. Um, but as far as the, the hallucinogenic uh, mushrooms that Pogo had asked for, there's enough for probably three or three, maybe four doses. Okay. So I'll grab those for him. Okay. And then I think I was doing poisons to be able to do like poison arrows and stuff. Okay. Um, those would be worm root, I think it was, that you were growing? 
Um, I'll have to check which one that was, because uh, I remember you grabbed some uh, that you could try to grow. Uh, but those would be the same as the herbs. They, they take a little longer to grow. So you'd need, mm -hmm. you know, at least a month, really. And it's been about two weeks since you were planting those. Um, so you need a little longer for them to be harvestable. Okay. Uh, but go ahead and add the hallucinogenic mushrooms. Um, do you have uh, enough for three, three and a half, maybe four doses with that? Um, in the crow's net, uh, Norok, were you doing anything else with uh, uh, with you and, and Avar there? Uh, nope. Yeah, just gonna hang out and then go. Uh, after a while, we'll find a place for him to sleep. I don't know if he doesn't have a room yet, or if there's a bed, you can bring it to my room or whatever. Uh, okay, to set him up a room, yeah, because it's yeah, still pretty early. Before, before okay, I, I wasn't sure what time it was. Yeah, it's only about one one thirty maybe at this point. Yeah, yeah then we'll just hang left. out and talk. Okay, and stuff for a while. Okay. Yeah. Um, then Sarah and Pogo, as you guys arrive, um, Sarah, you actually on the broom, you probably could catch up because he's trudging through the snow. But you know, if you if you chose to or not, it's up to you. Um, yeah, no, she's not walking in the snow. I'm just gonna like glide past and be like, "You want to ride? I'm going this way." <laughs> How far is it? Like twenty feet? <laughs> you pretty much almost there by the time yeah, you get yeah, to I'm that point. Yeah, I'm fine. That's <laughs> right. That's right. It. That's I contrary to popular belief, I can walk on my own. <laughs> The snow has been pretty well tramped down, like going in and out of the crow's nest, like out right outside of the front of the the, uh, the uh, kettle keep where you guys are. The snow is pretty pretty thick, but in front of the crow's nest, people are going in and out of there all day, so it's pretty well tamped down there already. So it's you're... not like I can't walk; I just prefer not to. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Everyone, each their own. This is so much cooler. Um, as you guys pass through the door, then, uh, you know, near enough anyways, the two of you pass in at the same time. Uh, Sarah, the, I mean, the roof is high enough for you to be able to float in on the broom, which Once is a little I'm bit awkward. I'm in but... all... I'm, <laughs> right. all I'm walking. I'm right. not floating through the building. <laughs> okay. Uh, you make your way in. Um, uh, you do see uh, uh, Wilson is behind the, the counter there. You don't see Rook uh, at the moment, although you, you know she's usually there in the evening anyways, because most of the time uh, she tries to get up on the stage and, and you know, do a song or two. Um, and you know she likes to get up when there's people there. Uh, ideally, Quill if she gets a chance. Um, but anyways, the, um, the the place is pretty sparse. Uh, there's there's you know one table with two soldiers sitting there that, that are both cl uh, crow blinders. Uh, the Mio Tower are all gone. As you guys you guys already knew that, but you don't see any Mio Tower. Um, and uh, you know there, there's enough space anyways for you guys to pretty much sit anywhere. So what are you guys doing? There's only two people inside. There's two crow blinders at one table. There's another table that there's another one that, that is uh, uh, no. clearly like just leaned back in his chair and uh, like nodding off, trying you know trying not to fall asleep. I was hoping there'd be more people here. You so you knew this last when you guys arrived here. You, uh, they have pretty much evacuated the majority of people in case the Vabians attack. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go up and uh, this is where this is where the quartermaster is too, right? Yep. All right. I'm gonna go and ask the quartermaster if, uh, um, you know what? No, I'm, uh, uh make a perception I'm, check, Sarah. Uh, what is the mood of the, the people inside here? Are they looking all sad? No. The three? The one, one of them is like trying not to fall asleep, and the other two are having a couple of drinks. It's clear that they probably are off shift. For once, I got a good room. Uh, Sarah. A crow blinder in a very heavy uh, green cloak uh, steps in through the doorway. Um, you, you buy his gear. You, you, you know, he appears to be a crow blinder at least. Um, there's a heavy dark beard hanging out, but his but he's got his hood pulled up very, you know, uh, very close over his face. He steps in through the doorway. He kind of darkens the doorway enough that everybody notices because it's pretty dark in here. They did they don't bother lighting the lights during the uh, during the day a lot of the time. Uh, just natural light from the windows and the door. Um, so you turn and see him, and he kind of walks in, shuffles in. He doesn't really look at you. He just kind of kind of walks in and, and uh, sits at a table, not too far from you guys. Can I do an insight check and see if he's like trying to be sneaky or if he's just like tired and just wants to sit down? Yeah, go ahead and roll it. And I am going to decide. It's been weeks since I've performed in front of anybody. I'm going to do it anyways. I'm okay. going to go stand up on stage, and I'm going to pull out my. my I'm going to use my. Uh, a hat of disguise to give myself a nice uh, floor length kind of long jacket red with gold and white trim with a nice green uh, light green uh, cloak attached and, uh, and a matching hat with a long feather uh, all kind of almost royal looking as I take as I go up on the stage okay 
um, your regal attire, then you make your way up to the stage. Uh, as soon as you do, uh, the, the Crowblinder who was leaning back, like his head tilted backwards, trying not to fall asleep, where he would, you know, occasionally startle himself awake. Uh, he kind of, kind of sits up and, and you know, clambers his way where he's just got elbows on the table, leaning over, and looks, you know, happy for for a reason to distract him. It seems uh, the two that are drinking both kind of there's a wood scraping as one of them moves the chair over, kind of next to his buddy, uh, and the three of them are staring in your direction. All right. What is it, Bard? What are we going to hear today? I figured I would sing you a song that my own father sang to me when I was but a young babe. Maybe five or six, he would sing this to me during the day. He would always put a smile on my face and cheer me up. I'm just going to go ahead and start singing. Are you ready? Yeah, of course. All right. A daughter of a farming man, a lass with raven locks. I met her at the Cock and Bulls, a tavern by the docks. Although we courted but a week, my love for her persisted. For when with her we laid in ways I never knew existed. She's a whore, yes a whore, <laughs> a lass of myth and lore. A pontifex of oral sex, she'll ride you till you soar. She's a whore, yes a whore, she's dear to fleet and core. Her legs are sprayed, we'll all get laid by the whore that we adore. Her bosoms were named Mary, her <laughs> they were pure and white. Her muff was named Elizabeth, cause it was nice and tight. Her nips were named Daisy and Rose, for they like flowering buds. The Ross was named the River Thames, cause it was full of mud. And I'll do that chorus again, so that's the song I'm singing to everyone. <laughs> Alright, there's, uh, there's, by the, by the time you get to the end, <laughs> good job, Zago. Uh, there's, there's, uh, a lot of takers being banged on the tables and so on uh by the oh, three four there. uh three well i mean technically the quartermaster as well i suppose uh the man who walked in you hadn't noticed him while you were talking to the quartermaster um you hadn't noticed him walking up to the stage and everything but you uh see three others you know cheering one of them still vaguely you know uh or, or struggling to keep himself awake but but clearly you know getting better uh, or waking up more now with the, with the rocket song. One of them, though, the, the man that you hadn't noticed that Sarah did, is sitting perfectly still. Like, frozen I'm, still. <coughs> I'm gonna message Pogo to be like, keep an eye on this guy while you're doing your thing. I'm gonna go get Pepper Jack. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna wink at her. Well, soon after we parted ways, I and saw her with like, my friend. I'm gonna act like I'm embarrassed by this song. I it what a week or two. <laughs> Although but it's not too much of an act. Then. She then did hop from bed to bed. But what made me so sad? Twas after several months had passed, I saw her with me, Dad. And then I'm gonna go back into the chorus. Oh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep an eye on this uh, other guy that came in while I'm while I'm singing my song. Okay, uh, Sarah, as you okay as you pass out through the door, uh, there are, there's a throng of of at least six more crow blinders that are like hitting the door as you're going out that are coming in. Um, and clear, it's it's basically people heard that you know Pogo is playing and they want to come listen. Um, so those that are not you know on direct orders or, or you know have a, a break from their their uh, watch shifts are are running in. Uh, but there's six that are already hitting the door and there's more that are headed this direction as you hop on the broom and sail around towards the uh, entrance to the to the uh, central keep. Um, Pogo, you see, you know, the crowd beginning to gather as they, they settle in. Uh, you keep your eye on this guy. He's sitting perfectly still. Like, you you, you know, his eyes are on you. He's facing your direction. Uh, his hood is pulled Not up over. Not my think, song. Um, um, so, think Lord of the Rings where Aragorn's sitting in the corner when they first meet him. Yeah. Like, just quiet and sitting in the corner, but perfectly still. Like, frozen still. Like, paralyzed almost. Um, no blinking, no nothing. Uh, but you can't really see much of his face. His, his hood's pulled over. He's just got a, a big dark beard. <clears throat> uh, hanging out of it, but apart from that, uh, he it's it doesn't seem to be it, it doesn't look like malice. It doesn't look like anything. It just looks he just looks you know like perfectly still. After uh, I finish my song, oh boy, how about a little cloud work? No, no, we just we just got here. You you're not done yet, are you? I'm not done yet, but I have a little cloud work. How about you, my friend? What uh, what are you up to to this fine day? Tell me about your day, and I'm gonna be asking this brooding person sitting in front of me. Uh, he's he's about in the middle. Like he he chose a table at about the middle of the room. Uh, there's no response. He doesn't react at all. Still looks perfectly frozen. Oh, to the shame. Uh, he must have you, had his tongue removed. You, <laughs> uh, when you 
ask that though, the other crow blenders that are sitting around, you see them kind of murmuring amongst each other. They're looking at each other and murmuring. So something clearly is going on. Uh, Sarah, you making your way in through the through the center keep. Um, you see the war room, basically the, the kind of straight hallway going back through the center keep. The war room's on the left. You've been there plenty of times, of course. Uh, you actually passed on your way out uh, as you were leaving the teleportation room. But anyways, uh, the door is open. Uh, you, you make your way to it. Ozzy's not there anymore. He seems to have already you know, handled his, whatever communication he needed with, uh, with Pepper Jack. But you, uh, uh, floating in through the doorway, Pepper Jack is behind the table. Ah, oh, haven't seen you for a bit. Good to see you've made it back safely. Yeah, uh, there's a rather suspicious individual in the uh, bar listening to Pogo. He's uh, he just walked in. Show me. And... He's already around the table and rushing after after you. Show me. Yep, uh, I'll lead him. Uh, you I'm gonna um... start singing a song again, a new song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the murmuring that you saw amongst the the uh, the other crow blinders that have gathered, there's more that have come in through the door. Uh, there's by this point, there's probably fifteen or so crow blinders in. Uh, and then this one who is sitting perfectly still, who is dressed in Corblander's garb with this big, heavy green, like, woolen cloak. Um, but the murmuring around them, they've kind of stood up and are, and are starting, like, as the others come in through the door, they immediately sense these are, you know, they're, they're, they're you know, friends. These are soldiers that they've been fighting side by side with for a long time. So they immediately tell that there's something wrong. So they're not um, as focused on your songs. So they're basically trying to figure out what the issue is, uh, if that makes sense. So are you still continuing to try to sing? Oh me, yeah. yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm going to sing uh, after that awkward interaction. All right. How about we speed it up a little bit, ladies and gentlemen? This is one that I heard that I learned when I was on a boat ride not too long ago. And one, two, three. I once were a man who said he was a fan. He wanted to sing my shanty band, but the bottom of his face looked weird. So weird there was skin on his chin that a load and beard. From his crown to his ear was most sincere. But you can't sing shanties if you got no beard. You got no beard, you got no beard. Can't sing shanties if you got no beard. You got no beard, you got no beard. You can't sing shanties if you got no beard. I once met a girl who said she saw as came to the show. She sung along, but her timing with the show was so, so slow. She was graced with a face like the morning glow, but a hollow from low. And a very front row said, You can't sing shanties if you can't shout ho. Can't shout ho, you can't shout ho. You can't sing shanties if you can't shout ho. Can't shout Ho, you can't shout ho. You can't sing shanties if you can't shout ho. And then I'm going to keep going from there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As you're uh, uh, frantically hey, everyone. <laughs> belting all of this out, um, there are really the, fast the, 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 the 15 or so um, uh, crow blinders that have gathered around this one man who's still sitting there perfectly still. He has not moved at all. Uh, he's kind of leaned back in his chair as if he was going to sit there and enjoy the, the um uh, uh, you know, the entertainment uh, has not moved at all since. He's been frozen still completely the rest of the time. Uh, you see a crow blinder walk up in front of him and kind of pass his hand in front of his face, like in front of the other guy's face, like like in front of his eyes to see if he reacts. Nothing at all. Um, and the soldiers have all kind of begun to surround him, Sarah, as you and Pepper Jack uh, uh, rush in through the doorway. Yep, uh, he's the one that all your soldiers are surrounding. That one right there. Uh, he kind of, kind of, you know, uh, politely uh, kind of you know, puts his hand on your shoulder and moves his way past you, uh, giving a gesture like stay back and then kind of realizes that you guys are, are you know, able to handle yourselves. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm following uh, right behind him. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it was intended, you could tell it was intended in a, in a polite manner and then realized, oh shit, yeah. well, never mind, you guys aren't just civilians. So um, uh, he makes, uh, he kind of gives a, a, a quiet look up uh, to Pogo and then makes his way uh, to, to the man, uh, you know, surrounded by his, his soldiers. What is, let's see, the, situation here is he not moving is he frozen like the others and they kind of nod and and the one who waved his hand stands up he he didn't move he just he came in and he just sat down and then he hasn't moved and and the commander says don't don't touch him everybody back away uh sarah pogo do you see anything this is what did you see what tell me what happened he just walked into the bar and sat down but he was acting weird so when I'll Ozzy said you guys had spies, of... I thought I'd come get you. I'm going to stop singing, and I'm going to pull out my gem of seeing and look around uh, look around the room. Uh, is it? Does it need to be attuned? Oh, okay. Not required. Not required. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, what do you look... Uh, okay. Well, as soon as he's saying side, that, I'm just looking to see if I see anything weird in the room. Okay. Um, I, was in the way. I thought he was just being a dick. <laughs> No, he's, um, this is unfortunately not the first. We've, we've had a few that have snuck over the walls and made their way in, but um, just everybody stay back, don't touch him. Uh, do you have it? 
that 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 gem you're using there. Can you see anything? Like what what do you what does that do? I don't know what yeah, your guys' capabilities really are. Just look through it. I can see things that are invisible in case of something else in here. I I thought maybe this is one of your men that got turned that way. No, this is one of theirs. So there's there are people just come in and sit down to enjoy a show and a beer and then turn to stone. Well, not usually. This is what is there? What are they up to? This is definitely strange. But they and can. This isn't the first have... person. You said another one. Are people just turning solid like this? Well, they're spies that they've sent through. The two others, this and, and two others. So they just sit there and listen. They don't actually do anything. They've. I don't know if they have a, a certain amount of ability to move before they can't anymore. I don't know. Ozzy's still studying and we haven't figured out what's happened yet, but regardless their pestilence is, is something we need to stay away from. Eventually, what's here, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's a person or not, I don't know if this is just some, some simulacrum, but it'll eventually start to break down and, and become bugs and, and other things and spread disease. So we need to dispose of this, but we we would like to know why or how or what this what their purpose is what this thing is doing. So what do you what do you see with the, the gem there? Uh, give me a perception check, Bobo. As I hold the gem up to my eye and scan from my perch upon the stage. True sight. Does true sight. I need to see. Does true sight see magical arrows too? Uh, I just know it sees invisible. Uh, it cannot it's see not through just magical though. darkness. I don't think it sees through magical darkness. Uh, I thought it could see magical R's okay. too. Though, it allows me to see through darkness um, and invisible objects, but I don't think it sees through magical darkness. So I'm correct. It's not magical darkness I'm concerned with specifically, but uh, I thought it could see magical auras too. But I could uh, be wrong there. Uh, let's yeah. see. Can see in normal and magical darkness, invisible creatures and objects automatically detect visual illusions that succeed on saving throws and perceives the original form of a shape change. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, you see that that is not a human at all. Uh, it is a a massive swarm of of uh, like locusts. So look, something like are they still moving? No. Oh, they are. Yes. Oh, They're the locusts. Right. If you, so you, I'm just going to pull the gem away and it's just frozen. It's just a, it looks so, like it's frozen. I am going to tell everyone to step away from it, and I'm going to say, that's actually just a whole bunch of swarm of bugs in the shape of a man. Ozzy? <laughs> yeah, Ozzy's not, the, he's not in the room oh, there. So was it Pepper Jack? Jack? Yeah, Commander Pepper um, Jack. Yeah. I will, after seeing that, uh, what do I have that I would cast on this fucking thing? I'm going to kill it. I'm going to kill it immediately. <laughs> okay. But I'm trying to see if I have something that can do a kind of an area shatter wouldn't be too it does far away let me let me let me clarify it is a swarm but it looks like it's it is a singular creature you don't need to worry if it's like a single creature that you'd only hit one of the bugs if that makes sense uh so you uh shit, I'm going to, here. um uh, real quick I'm, so because sarah would know this do you remember what these are yeah, they're, 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 the, they're the shapeshifter things like the one we found in the desert yeah the, the well, jack i'm going to yeah. 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 Use my last fifth level spell because we haven't actually taken a long rest yet, and I'm going to control as many tables as I can <laughs> and have them all slam into this fucking thing. Okay. <laughs> all right, go so ahead. I, I'm guessing they'd be like either uh, probably large items, so I think it'd be two large items. That's and fair. Yeah, there's plenty of tables just, by, so it would just slam on the this thing and all right. uh, they'd be physical so attacks, but okay. Um, it's not moving, so I'm gonna say that you can basically hit it as if it was uh, um, incapacitated, you know. So it's it's not gonna it, 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 or uh, uh, unconscious, basically. You're not gonna miss, is what I'm saying. So it would do 44 damage then, or oh, so does it get a critical, or does it get? Um, it's crit? not. Uh, shit. I guess. It, yeah, might as well. Yeah. I mean, it, it, he he literally can't, like is completely frozen, not like roll out of the way or anything like that. Uh, like fl like cannot move at all. Um, so yeah, go ahead and roll it. It'd be four d ten. Uh, oh, I didn't do it. Critical damage. Uh, well, we can. Yeah, we can take it. Nice. It's yeah, fine. Be forty. Uh, um, that's fine. Plus another four. Okay. All right. So, so then forty-four. Yeah. 
Uh, all right. Um, the you you uh, lift the table, not the one that he's sitting at, but the two that are beside it. As the blinders step away, uh, and both of the the tables kind of lift up and then rotate. Kind of squash it like one. Yeah, thing. exactly. So the flat part is is on yep. the middle for each of them, and just smash them, you know, sandwich style between the tables. Uh, there is an, a, a, just a, a boom of this kind of disgusting looking, like blood, like bug guts that just splashes out. On, on all directions of it, uh, kind of rains down on the, the surrounding crow blinders. Uh, you see them kind of kind of pulling, you know, of hands over eyes, trying to get the, the, the muck off themselves. Um, this, the tables separate, and you hear a clink as something hits the floor. It's beneath whatever you know remains of the, of the smashed bugs. Uh, but there's you know little bugs here and there that are still scurrying away. But you know, one of the soldiers will stomp on this one, another one stomp on another one. Uh, there's no more movement. Uh, the, the soldiers kind of kind of uh, you know are still drawn and still prepared, like they're you know ready for for anything else that. May come out uh, I'm gonna, like hold from... the tables together and then like slowly like you're like opening like hands and have a bug in it no i'm okay. gonna like like crack them open okay so i can see what's inside uh it is <laughs> two hands thousands thousands of uh you know smashed bug corpses on the tops of these tables you hear wilson you know come on i just cleaned them this morning uh, I'll, I'll just press the digitation on them. They'll be fine. <laughs> and I'm going to use Mage Hand to scoop up whatever the hell fell down. Okay. All right. So you did hear something metallic hit the ground, um, and you kind of using Mage Hand to, to uh, kind of move most of the guts aside. You find what it is, and you lift it up, and it's a single uh, copper piece, like a penny. It's covered they in mud guts. You're going to clean it off. Uh, I don't, I don't know. To be honest, if we were out in the snow, they could have been quickly lost. They turn into bugs like this, but you know, I, I hadn't noticed if they did. I don't know. You can ask Ozzy; he may have found something. He, he was investigating them much more than we were. Okay. I'm did he? Did he do anything be... else? Like, did he, he? Didn't hurt anybody. He didn't. Didn't do anything, right? He just came in and sat down. That's all that happened. Yeah, unless something happened in between the time went to get you. I was hurt personally about it. <laughs> well, we've got at least two dozen of the, of the, the men that could use some entertainment still heading in, so it's a good time for it if you are up to doing a, a few more songs. If, man, you don't mind, you know, you can sit around on the, on the other tables, right? Little Bug Guts isn't going to hurt anybody. And, and I, I use like cheering. the table one table to kind of scrape off the other table on the other. <laughs> oh, side of the, no, no, no. Down to the ground. <laughs> and you couldn't even think about side your dot. Like you just do it here on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to think press the digitation to clean them up. <laughs> as uh, I ask Wilson for some shoes for a young child. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, we'll come back to you guys here in a minute then. Uh Artime, in checking the uh, oh god damn it, Sako, I meant well, to that- grab it. I meant to grab a thing for, for Sako too, and I forgot. So um, I'll come back to you in just a second here, Sako. Um, I meant to, okay. to grab that while I was while I was doing something else there, and I, I forgot to uh-huh. do it. Um, yeah, Sarah, or uh, Artemis, rather, and checking the leather. Yeah, uh, it is frozen solid at this point, but it is. Uh, it, you, you feel like once you've scraped off enough of the frost uh, that you know if you were to, to kind of you know just put it in a warm enough room near a fire for a while uh, that it is it is pliable to the point that you can use it now. Um, you would need to really, you know, use some proper tanning oils and, and a lot more scraping before it would be um, soft enough to like really form a lot out of it. But if you were trying to use it to make tents or anything, basically, if you were trying to to wear it, you're going to need to do a little more work. Probably, you know, another couple of days worth of work on it. Uh, but if you're trying to like make, you know, use it for crafting material, it's ready to go. Okay, I think what I was going to try and make. Um, what was it? I was making tents and stuff. I was yeah, making so, something so, for somebody. I can't remember exactly. Well, you, you originally, before you guys left, yeah, you guys were making, um, like, warm clothes and stuff with them, uh, but a tent for Sako, or for Nazim, rather, because his, his feet were sticking out of the extra halfling tent, remember? Right, yeah. Uh, so, up to you what you want to do there. Okay, yeah, so I'll just work on that. Okay. All right, uh, then... Um, hmm. with the roll that you made, that, that would have been a 15, Sako. Um, as far as gathering more details from it that would be useful for you, um, you feel like there's still a certain, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, like a translation key. Like, imagine, you know, if you, if you had a little more understanding of how this language works, that you would be able to decipher more from it. 
um, meaning that basically, uh, right. I, I think I know what you're saying. I know how to speak Spanish fluently, so I know 90% of Italian already, but I don't have that little bit to push me over, so I fully understand Italian. Yeah, and if you had a, a, a dictionary that you could grab the last few words from it, that you would kind of unlock the rest, and that, that rest is very important. Um, yeah, so, so basically that, like there, there's, you have um, enough of this language to be able to piece a lot of it together, but it takes so long for you to read and reread and reread and reread uh, the same sections over and over again before you finally, you know, grasp what it's really, what it's really saying. Um, but uh, you do, hmm, you do gather more by the, the, this time spent in studying this, that the bits that you saw on the Nautilus do you remember what I'm talking about there? Mm -hmm. Those things have more context now, and they make more sense now that you've kind of read a little bit out of this, because there there's a couple of uh, similar situations, let's say, that you read. This this it is it isn't a novel; it's a historical document uh, that you're reading. But there are a couple of things that occur in there that uh, uh, kind of reframe the memories of the three illithid that were there in a different way, and now you you have a better understanding of what the pilot must be. Oh, good. Okay. You remember the pilot that I'm talking about? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, All right. All right. So that's so that makes more sense now that the pilot isn't uh, hostile. That there was the, the 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 your understanding of it now. Although on the ship and originally when the you know we're we're seeing the memories of the elected there, you thought the pilot is going to be a bad thing. They they didn't want you to wake the pilot like that was going to be, uh, you know, like the pilot would be a, a problem or a bad thing. And if anything, the pilot might be friendly to you, whereas it was hostile to them. If that makes more sense. Gotcha. Oh. All right. Um, then I guess we can jump back then to uh, Nazim or uh, Norak. Are you still sitting there with Avar? You said you're going to go yeah. find him a, a room? Yeah, I'm going to go uh, figure out a, a room for him or you know, bring an extra bed into my room if there's space for it or something like that. That's where he okay. has a place to stay tonight. All right. There's enough rooms in here that you can definitely get him uh, his own separate room, but there's a lot of just stuff like old tables and chairs and things like that um, that are all over the place. So, I mean, you guys, this is yours. You guys can make it your own. You know, however you so choose. So, if you want to set, you know, clean out a space for him, he can definitely have his own room, or you can set him up in yours. Up to you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably set him up in mine for now. Okay. All right. Then uh, you spend your, you know, the next hour or so doing that. Then, uh, <coughs> Nazi, or sorry, uh, uh, Pogo and Sarah. Uh, well, as soon as I'm done cleaning off the tables and getting the shoes, I'm going back. I, if there's more people coming in, I'm going to sing one more song for them after okay. uh, after the tables get re resituated and everything. Okay. All right. Making sure after, I'll give them all a few minutes to grab a tankard of ale. All right. Uh, yeah, they do. There's there's a good, you know, probably 25 or so uh, crow blinders right. in at this point. Um, and Pepper Jack has, has left back out uh, after, after Sarah did. I'm doing all this, by the way, to just as we get the soldier's trust and so that we're higher regards in the soldiers' eyes when we do this. I feel like they're going to like us more. Uh, I mean, give me, then give me a flat charisma uh, performance. Give me a performance check. You feel like they already hold you guys in pretty high regard already anyway, but uh, yeah, you, you um, <laughs> your reputation is, is, is certainly well earned, but uh, is only improving with your, you know, Attempts to relieve some of the stress of their day to days. All right. Becky? Oh, uh, so I'm going to go back, give Avar his boots, and get my shit back, and then I'm going to sit down and study in my room for a bit. Okay. At least, what time is it now? Uh, probably about 1 30 ish at this point. As you guys have only been back for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Probably Wait, I was like making four. tents and some bags. Bags? What do you mean? Yeah, because uh, Nazim didn't have a bag. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely, I mean, for something like that, they, the only, they're not pliable enough to be like comfortable for wearing, like to make, you know, clothing or armor out of. But apart from that, you have enough to be able to craft, you know, workable goods with strong... Yeah. Uh, you know, so I'm going to get some a bit of it ready to be able to make a bit of like boots and stuff, but most of it's going to be for the tent and the bags. Okay. All right. 
I will study um, for like three hours and then I gotta go find Ozzy and give him that coin and some other stuff. So. Okay. All right. Then you're sitting down to do that. Uh, Pogo, after finishing that song? Uh, I am going to finish that song and I'm going to go and see if I can grab a large... Well, I guess I- Ivar's still just the size of like a small adult. Like a small adult, right? Yeah, about that, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, just a regular, like a, 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 a slightly shorter than average human, adult human. Go, go ahead and go, go grab a standard short sword, you know, one that they'd have lying around. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to bring that back to him so that he can use that to practice with so he doesn't just have his bow. Okay. Uh, and I am going to, is Pepper Jack still in the room? Uh, he, he left. No, he. I mean, he left. You assume he's probably either in the war room or in his cabin. That's where uh, the only place you guys ever see him. I would like to go speak with Pepper Jack. Okay. Just me and him. And right. I, you find him in the war room. Uh, right. He is by himself. Yeah. I'm gonna bring him a, a tanker of the veil. Okay. I'm gonna bring myself one. And uh, uh, I could use this. No bugs in it, right? Probably not. I mean, no more than usual, I suppose. Uh, so, it's been. It's been quite a day <clears throat> good to have you I'm back not... though at least you guys spotted that thing in time yeah that was a bit of a strange occurrence I'll say. I suppose hopefully it's uh, hopefully those lesson would get better I um, I want to ask you something What's some that? weird things have been happening to me and uh, I was wondering does the name of a place Carcosa or a person Carcosa we think it's a place. Does that ring a bell to you? He squints a little bit. Where'd you hear that name? A couple places. And um, it seems like whatever this is, whatever it's about, might have some connection to us or me. And we're just trying to figure out... So I, I, I hope I'm not telling telling uh, uh, things that I shouldn't be, but um, you know your friends came and asked about that already, right? Sarah came and asked about... If we knew what might be happening with you, I assume they did that with your permission, or at least you were not. Uh, this isn't offending you. Well, it's not offensive. It's it's more of a. I don't think I even know what's happening with me. Maybe she was just checking up on me. She wasn't sure. Oh, it was it was definitely intended with, um, you know, well, just intended to try to help as best you could after your um, a return to the land of the living. Let's say. Yeah. They seemed worried. Yeah. But um, I mean, I only know, you know, the the the, the uh, uh, mythological, let's say, uh, place, the, the city, the, the sleeping city. But that's that's about as much as anyone else. It's, it's, I know as much as anyone else, rather. I mean, you you might be better off asking Quill, maybe even Ozzy. I, I don't know. I, I've never heard it to be anything real, and in fact, I would have assumed it was uh, entirely just myth until you came back and Sarah had asked these things. All right. How about Malektoreth? Does that sound familiar to you? Anything more real world? It's the, another name of the same place, I think. Just ch- seeing if anything. A lot of this is new to me. I haven't spent much of my time studying, you know, this kind of historical stuff, so... Just Bad throw it together. Usually it's as much of this, studying as much of this, and he lifts the tankard up as I can, and the rest of the time studying these, and he points at the, the war map on the table. While I'm here, is there any new news on Clover? There, like, there's a cast over his eyes almost immediately. Nothing good. Um, we hear rumors that, that she's still there. I guess, my, my best guess, um, from the other agents that are still in the city, is that she's been imprisoned somewhere, but clearly not able to communicate at least, and you know, the, the little that we have, I think, came from the, the creature that attacked all of you. Yeah. All right. Well, then, I will speak to Ozzy about that. Get a good night's sleep. But uh, thanks. Hope you have a better rest of your day. Yeah, thanks for bringing this. I should have grabbed one I was there. I didn't think of it. Cool. And then I'm going to go ahead and head back to the keep. Okay. Give the sword to Avar. But what it... Like, I can have this? I get to, like, swing it at things when they attack us and stuff? You can maybe play around when he has a few minutes. But um, just you can keep that with you. Just in case something 
You know, your bow is great, but just he is he is so it. excited and beaming. This is the, I've never had a sword before. This is my first sword. This is this is very cool. Thank you very uh, much. Quick tip: the pointy end goes in the other guy. This is pretty blunt. Do I need do I need to sharpen it to get a pointy end? God, I mean, it's it's. You're you're strong. You'll you'll be able to do enough damage with it. But yeah, you can keep it sharp. You can get a whetstone. Uh, you can get a, you can keep it oiled a little bit. But it's not. It's just something you can practice with, just to keep with you, just in case. You know, just yeah. just to keep you safe. If them book birds ever attack, I'm I'm ready to go. I'll protect all of us. <laughs> all right. And I think that's. I think I'm going to. Is everyone else in the keep? Uh, yes. Sarah went back to study. Yeah, everybody's in the keep. Norok is preparing a room with. Well, you found Avar with Norok, so. I'd like to ask Norok. What What do you think? What do you think we should do? I'm finding myself torn with these two rival factions and us somewhere in the middle, where the one place hates us, the other place is hates us, and they're surrounding us. What do you think we should try to do? All I know is that we gotta stop something one way or the other. Cause I know I didn't like trying to be enslaved, and most of the people don't either. So I don't well, know exactly what to do, but bad. we gotta stop that at least. They're clearly bad, and I'm and I'm I'm worried. I feel like I know Sarah has her finals to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, essentially, yeah. Just studying for finals right now. <laughs> yep. Cool. I don't know. I, I really want. I feel like. I feel like I want to find out what happened to Clover, but I also want to find those that that shield, that big wall thing with the scales on it. The sheath. The sheath. Yeah, you, you're saying you're saying sheath or uh, uh, shield rather. The word you're looking for is sheath, like that. Yeah. I feel like if we find that. It'll give us more leverage. We might even be able to find it, get it away from here, and maybe let some rumors fly. Maybe, maybe let them know that it's not here. We can even, I mean, if you think about it, the the Empire doesn't want to get involved because it's so far away. But I don't have a lot of love for the Empire right now. What if we brought it to the Empire? What if we forced its hand? Yeah, we could. Uh. It's just something that way we could. Because I feel like this point, the empire just doesn't want to deal. That's the that's the kind of theme here, right? The empire just like we don't give a shit. It's not our problem. The empire is trying. Well, okay. Um, to 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 go back a little bit, Zimra actually was responsible for this. When uh, oil alert. Abby, <laughs> you guys knew this already. Well, Cro uh, uh, Piper Jack had told you this, so at All least right. the, at least the general consensus is that this is what they believe. Uh, so um, when this is before Pogo had joined, but Pogo being in Cadogan at the time when Vabian showed up would be seeing the kind of effects of this as well. Anyway, when um, uh, the Vabians decided to. Uh, evict all Empire citizens out of the country and started the chain of dogs, remember? Early in the campaign, everybody else remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, so when that happened, and they, they were basically uh, I think Crystal knocked uh, Justin, you know Crystal knocked is. Um, so think that, because this was before uh, uh, you and Sako had joined. Um, Sako, I gave you some of this history because you were from Babby already. Anyway, um, the Zimra had done that. Zimra, basically, when, when the Chain of Dogs were sent there, uh, or sorry, when the Crowblinders, rather, were sent to rescue the Chain of Dogs, which is when you guys... You Zimra know, had, had, was had, the one that told us to... Zimra was the one who sent the Chain of Dogs and then said, that's it, That's we're not doing anything else. Like, just leave them, leave them to die. Uh, when the Vabians surrounded, uh, the, well, really, this is when it was still done. Scathag. Well, then they were, they told them to leave all the people. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah. So Zimra was the one who had convinced the Emperor to to so, say that the Crowblinders were were. I feel like I'm partially. I, I feel like I'm kind of on the on the page here, though. Like, You're, you pretty much got it right. Yeah, it's it's Empire, basically that the Empire is is saying fuck them. You know, we're we're yeah. not going to try to to do anything because specific. You you can assume that some of it is political in the sense that the Empire, or at least Zimra or the Emperor, maybe uh, feels like if they get too involved and push back, that that will incite hostilities and it'll turn into all that war. So instead, they just you know throw their hands up and pretend you know that they can't do anything about it. So I suppose the bit problem there is, what would the Vibians do 
if they knew it wasn't here, if they were just... Because we've got most everyone... Why can't they move the crow fort again? Why can't we just move the whole crow fort? Because it takes too long, it's too, too difficult. Yeah, I mean, it was a pretty heavy ritual to get it done here, and that pr probably is the eventual plan, of course, is to vacate out. But uh, I'll go ahead and tell it to you. You guys haven't asked this question, but I'll tell it to you that this is, you know, occurred maybe off script, or off, off page, rather, uh, that the concern is that if the sheaf is here and you guys just haven't found it, that basically the, the Vabians insist that it is here and they don't want the Vabians to get it. And we're okay. still not positive it's not here. We just Correct. have Correct. That's exactly it. There's yeah. there's very good reason to believe that the sheaf actually was in Dunscathak, which is now on the roof, remember, because the oh, Crowfort grew yeah. up from underneath. Uh, and there were a ton of other Mefuan artifacts, and it was always rumored that it was here. So now you guys are sitting in a keep with the ruins up on the roof that the sheaf variable could be inside of somewhere, inside that rubble, um, which is where you What about using the thing like everything. locate object to try and find it? This is a historical artifact with, like, there's, there's, um, uh, like fake representations the way that you would see like a cross, you know what I mean? Like a, like a uh, you know, cross okay. beam. So, so you don't really know precisely enough, like you may be able to get an inclination, but it's very unlikely. Just because the modern representations would not be historically accurate or, um, you know, like basically imagine seeing a cross and then trying to, to say that that's the same thing as, you know, a, a, you know, a Roman crucifixion from 2000 years ago. Well, I think, I feel like maybe we should try to, try to search for it. That's my two cents. I feel like we could do that. We could try to find it. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe bring it to the Empire. I don't trust it here. Maybe if we do that, if we get it out of here for certain, then they can move the crow fort out of, out of harm's way and deal with those consequences separately. I know there's going to be consequences for them from the Empire, but... something we might be able to do. Do you remember what the sheath is? Like, the reason they want it? Yeah, it's part of a uh, long, dead creature. Snake, Snake powerful yeah. Powerful creature yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, one of their... One of their go well, an ancient Vabian... Something that they're trying to God. bring back. Exactly, yep. So, the, the, the new Adawa, the new... If we new find Adawa. it, maybe we just go somewhere random, bury it in a hole. Let this be some two hundred year. We all we all make a pinky promise, and we don't talk about it at all. And then it's gone forever. We just throw it. We'll find a place that has just got a disgusting, like, like, like. We'll do we'll basically do it like underneath an old outdoor latrine or something. No one will go there. All right. So the conversation has seasoning. Sure. <laughs> that's all. That's all I have. I just want to talk to Norak about about. Sure. So while you're having this conversation, Sarah, you, you find, um, uh, you were going to find Ozzy, right? Uh, I was going to study for a few hours and then go find him. Okay. Ozzie. Then, um, then during, the, while you're still studying, uh, Nazim is studying, Norak is with Avar and Pogo having this conversation. Uh, Artemis, you're probably, since you're, you're up in the parapet, right? In the, in the tower? Yeah. Okay. You see Ozzy, uh, floating across the, um, uh, you know, a, a little bit above the snow, um, floating towards the the, crow for, or for the the kettle keep, rather, towards the door. Okay, I'll go down and say hi then. Okay. Um, you make your way down. By the time you get down there, he's already uh, coming in through the doors. Oh, Artemy, good to, good to see you. Um, I had uh, some news. Apparently, there was a, a a thing. Something happened in the in the crow's nest. Had you heard? Uh, no, I've been working with the uh, mother. Uh, well, the commander said that at least Sarah and Pogo had seen it, so do you know where I might find them? Well, Sarah was going to study anything? Uh, I'm uh, afraid I'm not familiar enough with your guys' Okay, I'll bring you. Her. Thank you. <laughs> um, Sarah, um, you you probably wouldn't have even heard that originally, but you do hear you know, footsteps approaching in the hallway and then a, a knock on the door. Yay, come in. I'm not even taking my eyes off the book. I'm still studying. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> tea leaf. Um, the commander had said you had found something, and there was some question about what had occurred there at the, the crow's nest. Yes, I was going to bring that to you when I was done. And I'll just give him the little copper coin he found. So this thing fell out of a dude made of bugs. Another then? Yeah, I'd, I'd heard about that portion of it. I've been trying to figure out where this is... Um, 
uh, what their intent is, I guess, what their goal is. They're, they're spies, clearly, but I don't know what their what the purpose is or what the coin is Wait, for. Wait, somebody made out of bugs? Yeah, so Pogo squished him with some tables, and then this thing fell out of him. I don't know if it was holding him together or what, but I think he's like those jackal things that we met in the desert. Oh, um, I could use the moonbeam or the camp to see if they find any more. This is the third, at least. If more come, then that could probably be useful. I can tell you that before the last one had erupted into vermin, uh, I had found a coin similarly uh, grasped in his palm. He was just frozen in the snow, and then when he burst into bugs, we disposed of them as best we could. Two of them are still in the infirmary, two of the, the, the uh, grub lighters that had helped. But I found a coin in his palm as well. Moonbeam would force it to change it back to its like uh, real shape. That would be helpful. Uh, these, I mean, the, the three that we've seen are dead. If more come, then you know that could be useful for that at least. But I think their real form just is this swarm of of pestilence. I just don't know what their purpose is. I don't know what the Vavians' integrity so, is. There's crow blinders that are still in the hospital from the previous attacks. Do you know what's wrong with them? Some disease. We're not sure what just yet. They're on the mend. I don't think they're gonna gonna pass or anything. But yeah, the the uh, the bugs themselves have a nasty bite. My guess would be that they're probably trying to kill us all off so they can just come in and grab what they think we have. There's better ways, though. If it was as simple as that, I mean, there's they outnumber us a hundred to one at least by now outside. Yeah, but are, is, if they're on a ceasefire, yeah. they're trying to get around that, aren't they? Exactly. It would prevent a war if we all just died of a disease. Yeah, very well could be. There seems to be more to it, though, and I haven't figured out just what. These coins have to mean something. Mm -hmm. Give me, um... I'll be right back, Alright. Uh, so I don't think Artemy would have access to this to be potentially useful. The DC is going to be probably outside of... Really, you're going to have to roll very high. Give me a an Arcana check, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that won't be enough. Yeah. Wait, wait, I still have... Oh, I do. I still have both. I will re-roll that. Okay. <coughs> oh, please, I get something better than a fucking five. Yeah, <laughs> barely. Still not enough, though. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's, it, it doesn't ring any bells for you, what, what the coin, what significance the coin might have. Yeah, because the one that we met in the desert didn't have a coin that he had on it. No, nope. Yeah, that, the, you talk about the hyenas, the jackal, or the yeah, yeah. hyenas. Yeah. yeah, the hyenas. Yeah, no, toss it to your witcher. <laughs> <laughs> the witcher would probably be pretty pretty handy right now. I mean, so, the, I mean, have you identified that it's just a regular coin? It's just a coin. It's it's not magic in any way, as far as I can tell. So maybe the coin is just something that they give the shifters. It's not a uh, okay, so... Like an idea. I, I know it's an actual shifter, but... Yeah, like, okay, I just wanted to clarify then, yeah. It's a specific species. The, the, the Krays, the Trays, uh, are a species of shapeshifter that don't turn into a single entity. They turn into, a, you know, multiple, like a pack of dogs. Yeah, like, but then she yeah. say, like, saying that word is kind of complicated, so I'm just... That's, no, that's totally fine, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't the, the specific, uh, uh, you know, species, like, of what... Um, uh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Azra is uh, not not the same thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyways, uh, it's it, yeah. It doesn't the the coin itself doesn't appear to be magic in any way. Well, I guess that gives me a little more information at least. I'll, I'll keep trying to figure out where this is coming from or what their intent is. But in the meantime, I guess what are your what are your plans? What are you all doing next? Do you have you figured that out yet? Um, I mean, it's it's about lunchtime at least. If you guys want to gather up, maybe we can have a discussion and talk about it. Sure. Oh, and I'm gonna grab the uh, plates and stuff. Uh, 
Will you give these to Quill? You do not have to mention they are for me. Rook is not a happy <laughs> woman. Oh, I've heard. So comfortable I've heard. <laughs> giving them to him. I just found them and thought he might be interested. There is a big misunderstanding. There's, oh, there's, there's been constant gossip of the halfling harlot that has been oh, uh, in <laughs> uh, Quill's quarters. Oh, that is not... Oh, oh I, I wouldn't be concerned with your reputation at all. No, no, nobody... Uh, uh, has much concern with the uh, the opinions coming from from Rook most of the time. Yeah, well, at least there's that. <laughs> God, your neighbors are setting off fireworks because the 49ers have won. I'm guessing. Oh, is that okay? <laughs> uh, fucking literally next door, like exploding <laughs> ones. Well, now, okay, so so now you understand when their house lights on fire and the police show up. Now, now you get what I'm talking about. That they that you know for whatever it is because yeah. I keep seeing them on next door and. Uh, in Ring, like you know, the, the Ring app uh, for my cameras. Um, I keep seeing the reports from from like right around you two. Uh, anyways, the uh, he, he at least you know suggests maybe you guys can all gather up and, and you know have some lunch and discuss what your plans are. Yeah, head down, down. Okay. Stairs to everybody's there. Uh, then anybody not going to go gather with Ozzy to discuss? No, I'm, 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 I'm ready to go discuss. I'm curious. Yeah, if my mind is straight from the book, I'm good to go. I can check. Uh, there is, there's a, a, a refrain from this um, that you do pull out uh, that I wanted to translate for you, uh, and it is uh, in that city effulgent. No mortal I saw, but my fancy indulgent to memory's law lingered long in the forms of the plazas and eyed their stone features with awe. And I'll tell you that, that that specific portion of it feels like it came from the same thing. You remember Santhus? Yeah, the old Santa, man of cottage. Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. The when you pulled the carpets off of the floor and there was the glowing kind of kind of blood like ink that, that glowed on the floor, it feels like it's, it's that. It's from the same thing. It's the same kind of cadence to the rhymes and everything. Um, I'll I'll put it in your uh, in your character channel uh, in Discord here in a minute. Sure, uh, I'll copy that over to notes. Okay. All right, uh, but you guys gather then back at the um, uh, in the the kind of not taverny area, I guess the, the mess hall essentially in the kettle keep uh, with Ozzy. Um, so, God damn neighbors, <laughs> is it still going off? Yeah, still doing stuff. Um, you, you all gather there at least in the meantime. Anyways, I'll go ahead and move you guys back over too. Um, so, what is the the plan then? Where am I sending you all? Uh. I think we need to go. F is that? Is it? Wait, are we in an open? Huh? Are there people around us? We're, we're like in a. We're in the kettle keep. Yeah, you're in the kettle keep. Uh, yeah, Ozzy, Ozzy had come to the kettle keep and and was speaking with Sarah and Artemy, and he's okay. met with everybody in the in the kettle keep. So small room. Do we have any way of? I just want to keep this private. I don't. I'm scared that some something is going to be listening to our discussion. Anyone have a way to do that? Uh, I know that it, Miss Artime does. Mm -hmm. yeah. The dome. Oh, oh right. Dome. No, we're not going to make a plant a whole tree dome just for this. It's fine. I'm sure it's fine. I think. I don't think the men would would. Well, I say men. That's not fair. There's, there's women's uh, Grove Landers too, as Pogo knows. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think anybody else would mind having an extra, you know, spot to to hide under without being pelted with snow all day. If you wanted to plant one outside. True, I, I certainly use the other one all the time. How oh, is Stira? <laughs> <laughs> Did you go look through it to find her name? Stira do it all right. She says that uh, she never wants to, to smell cheese again, if that makes any sense to you. Oh. She's really insane. Glad I'm not speaking to her anymore. <laughs> what a terrible, what a terrible crazy You can never trust that person again. Why well, don't think you want to eat cheese anymore? Are you daft? Who wants to take a cheese bath? That's just <laughs> weird. Pogo, apparently. Oh, right? It's not a cheese bath. It's a bath in a room with cheese. They're two different things. It's okay. Anyways, it's anyways, it's anyways, guys, we're not getting off topic. <laughs> I feel like we need to go back to that city, that town, and we need to see if we can find that object. If we're there, we might be able to use your magic to at least find, even if there's replicas, we can find one or two, and we need to see if it's there. I mean, that halfling that we found tied up in 
the same room that maybe was getting tortured. Yeah, but whose magic are we using? Because wasn't Artemy using that thing from her aunt that she gave back? No, someone's got find out. Someone can. Find I have find well. object. The the um, my aunt's choker had a find object spell on it, but it was a lot more powerful than the actual find magic or find object. But I could still use my normal find object. Yeah, no, it would be. I mean, I just I feel like so that's what they're after here, and the the crow blinders don't want to leave because what if it is here? But if we can so we'd have to check it, here first and right. then check the village because there's no, the, the problem is, up on top of the yeah, like the on top only, of. Well, we could check here first. We might as well before we leave. Since we're here, right? I mean, I'll be honest with you. I feel like they probably already did that. Someone here must have some similar magic here. If I may, yes, we, we've we've looked pretty thoroughly, but to be honest, it's so much rubble. It's There still could be anything under there for all we know. Quill's been up there most days trying to dig through as much as he can, but as far as Kodogan is the, the town that you're referring to, I assume? Mm-hmm. So the trouble there is the logistical concern of getting you to the place safely, because there's no circle for me to teleport you to in that region. You'd have to teleport probably... Wait, there's two. tree right? Hi. How Stop do you yeah, transport the via tree yeah. yeah. There's trees by there, right? I, if you have other means of getting there safely, go right ahead. I just mean as far as me getting you to a circle, uh, there there isn't anything conveniently located. Like all sorts of I could use, yeah. Flowers. Yeah, I could use trans, um, transport via plants. But what if we did that, and there's got to be a tree, you know, some tree you can remember on that area that's... Well, you walked back to, to the swamp, it. if I remember right. Yeah, we've walked back, back to, to the swamp, swamp. So got to remember that there, you know, as long as you can remember a specific tree you saw there, where, did any stand out? A few. But it also had to be big enough for Norrock to go through, too, so it's going to have to be one bigger. True. Well, plus, it, plus in theory, I could, I could go I could through it and then make it bigger. Norrock smaller. True. So, and we could go through. What we need to start doing is, when we go to places... Kind of an experiment, but... When we go to places, we need to start marking trees with, like, a little bit of cloth that you can memorize, put your hands on it, do whatever you else do to kind of member a tree. They know you can do it, and we should start doing that. I feel like that's going to save us a lot of time in the future. Actually, not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. What about the, like you, when you, I... would have, you would have discussed? Are there any trees near there? Yeah, there's a few. Um... There's a grove of them. Because we went, we went through like the whole swamp area. You remember that everything. one? I know there was that one big one that was off to the side of the road before we had to cross through with the soldiers. That oh, we hid behind big. it before. It was, a, yeah, it was an oak through. tree. Yeah, had like nine older. limbs. I mean, I mean, hundred and six the, branches. I mean, crashed, the crashed object you had discussed. Are there oh, any trees near there? That? Don't think so. Well, I mean, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> so, well, I don't. I think that was in the desert, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that wasn't in the desert. I don't know. No, it's not in the desert. No, no, the, the, the Nautiloid is what I'm talking about, and that's on the plane. <laughs> oh, that was on the plains. Yeah, that. I don't know the, why the I thought that was in the desert. There. Yeah, or, I don't know either. Oh, yeah. actually, that brings up a good point. If you have some chalk or ink that I could use, I could get us to some circles. So wherever the Nautilus is, I can get us there. Uh, so. The, the the reason so the reason I brought that up is that the the circle that is nearest that is essentially there. I mean, where I dropped you last time, mm-hmm. that's near the near the ship, right? I mean, you, you found that you told me about it hours later, so I imagine that it was close. Yes, which uh, if we do that, we're gonna need those things back that I gave you. They're gonna allow us inside. He grins a little bit, and you see him reaching into his pocket. That's kind of why I brought this up, because these things are kind of awkward to just have in my pants. So mm-hmm. I thought maybe I would give them back to you. Sure. Um, I studied them. They don't the appear to be particularly interesting, except for this kind of uh, spatially locked oddity of the metal surrounding it. Yeah, apparently He's referring to the spiral, the surrounding spiral. A door. Uh, I don't quite see how, but... Those those creatures, although we're aware of them, we know very little. So, if you find anything interesting, I'd be happy to, to learn of it. Sounds good. <clears throat> he gives you all three keys back. I'm gonna go shove them in our maze bag of holding. Okay. Oh right, I'm also gonna. They're heavy. 
Yeah, I'm you guys, you guys know what keys what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, the the, the spirals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm also gonna give Nizim his uh, tent and the bag once it's finished before we leave. Thank you. A full size tent is nice. So I need to ask Ozzy if if we can find this thing, do you want us to bring it back here, or do you want us to get it far away? What would be better for you? Your question assumes that hmm. this is safe company, right? I can, I can say, I can be truthful here with all of you. Yeah. Maybe. I'm gonna have a look at, <laughs> I'm gonna look at the theme. He, he actually, he actually grins. He says, "That's that's that's fair," and I expected as much from you. Uh, I, I don't find that a negative, but let me put it this way: my aims don't always align perfectly with the Empire and sometimes not even with uh, the commander, for example. Um, in this particular case, I would say if you were able to locate it to let me know and we could probably figure it out then. But I would not be offended in the least if you did inform the commander first. Pepperjack has all rights to know these are his people uh, and I would not be uh, the least bit bothered if you were to you know, discuss it with him first. That, that's totally fine. Uh, I would leave that up to you, what you guys choose to do with the knowledge you acquire. Donna, does he have this Donna Far speech? Because we've never really talked to him through it, right? We've only got one with Ozzy. Yeah, yeah we only have one with Ozzy, so you'd be the easiest to contact. Yeah, I could put him on if we needed to, but... I, I mean, tell you what, if you find it, and you would be, and you want the commander to know first. I'll, I'll go and find him, and, and you can speak to Pepperjack directly, or I can tell him whatever you prefer. Uh, I'll leave that up to you guys. It's it's really, as long as it doesn't fall into the the Khan's hands, I think we're okay. I just don't know exactly what the Empire would choose to do with it. I know what I would choose to do, and I just don't know if, if those things are the same or not. We could always just bury it in a hole. I mean, that's not a bad idea, but maybe we should go try to fix whatever the hell is going on with the Empire before we find this super powerful item that can resurrect a gigantic snake. Well, we can... Just say. Here's the thing. We, we just... We don't want... I don't want this board to get overrun. And I don't want them to find it before us. Because here's the thing. If they keep sending in spies to this, one of them is going to overhear a conversation about them not having it. Once that oh, okay. Hang on, real quick. Before just just pause. Everybody is paused. The, the scene is not going any further. No, no, not a single other word has has passed. Uh, I need Sarah, Artemis, Pogo, and Nazim. So everybody except for Norok. Um, sorry, G. <laughs> uh, to roll an Arcana check, real quick. It's still a very high DC, but. Ben, it's not, it's not anything. It's just not something that Norak would have any inclination at all. Yeah, to. it wouldn't even wouldn't even help. <laughs> yeah. You hit things with a sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he's smarter than Ben. He gets credit for. He just unfortunately, this is not something that would ring any bells. Uh, problem. Wait, did you roll that? What was that? Twenty four. That twenty four was now okay, uh, or twenty five rather. Um, well, it's probably fair that it would be Sarah in this case. Um, Sarah, it. It, as soon as Pogo says that, there's this kind of think video games uh, or, or even um, you know shitty movies where somebody says or, or even TV shows or whatever where somebody says something and somebody else goes, "Oh my God, you're a genius!" Blah 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 because of some bullshit reason, right? Some connective tissue that is completely irrelevant. Well, in the moment there where Pogo had said that if they come over here and they overhear something, you think that coin is um, a material object needed for a very specific spell. I'm going to just put my hands over Pogo's mouth so he doesn't say anything. Uh huh. And in my head, I'm just going to say, don't say anything in front of the coin, and then I will say the same thing to Ozzy. So, okay, let me let me clarify. It's With specifically message. okay. Um, the coin itself has no function. It's it's inert now. The coin is okay. a material uh, material spell component. For a very specific spell, so um, Sarah knows. 
the person then? During while the spell is being cast, it is it is used for that purpose, and that's presumably okay. why a spy might carry it. Uh, and the spell is that. Right. Oh, that's bad. What spell? Detect thoughts, so they don't even have to be talking out loud. They can just pick up shit from people's heads. So, well. A single copper coin is the material component for the spell Detect Thoughts. Uh, these spies, Ozzy had, had presumably not put it together, uh, these spies that are being sent in freeze after the spell is over because they, it only lasts for one minute. Uh, so they basically turn it on, do it, you know, whatever spying they need to do, and are translating the information back. Uh, so he had already finished what he was doing. And, and, and then they no longer care, and hence them just smashing them into bugs and so on. They're just, they're just a, you know, a, a, a tool, like a, you know, an automaton, essentially. So basically, it just gets the coin in here, uses it for one minute, and then that's probably why it was in the tavern, hoping to overhear what anybody. Which is also yes, out. which is also why Sarah saw him move. Uh, Pogo didn't see it, but Sarah Sarah saw him like rotate and move to watch you, and then he froze, and then he was frozen from there. The off. good news, guys, is everyone was focusing on me, probably <laughs> not thinking about other stuff. But uh, it's a decent deeper. radius, and there were other people nearby. So what were you I... thinking, Ray? <laughs> does the tech thoughts work in a way where they can they can choose like anything inside the person's mind or does the person have to be thinking about it right now yeah i was just gonna ask are they allowed to use the spell like as in probing deeper or is it just the initial uh thoughts at the top like as if they had gotten mine it had been like should i get a cat <laughs> uh i can't say how their their magicians work but at least as far as my uh Capabilities with the spell, and my understanding of it. I mean, keep in mind these things can be altered too. They they could have made a special version of it. I don't know, but as far as my own use of it, you can probe for about anything you want. It's just a matter of not being caught. How many people in this place? I mean, obviously the soldiers are still looking for it, so they're not in on it. Well, the first the one we found, it. the first one we found on the other side of the war room, on the wall outside, um, and the second one was in in the courtyard. I mean, in fact, it was with strings, so with his interesting haircut. <laughs> and he kind of grins at, at Pogo. I'm you would, just mature. <laughs> <laughs> you would think if they already probed in deep enough to find out we don't have it, that they would quit sending them in. He kind of shrugs. Well, maybe they don't, but maybe. Maybe they'll. Mm. Maybe that was it. Maybe they'll stop. I don't know. I doubt that. But if it was in in the crow's nest, my guess is they were trying to find the quartermaster. Maybe the quartermaster would you know know if we were hiding something like that away because it would kind of be in their wheelhouse. But well, my recommendation would maybe be to spread, make sure everyone knows, uh, make sure everyone knows that it's been found. Start a rumor, a lie, but that you're holding it for for at an arm's breadth of destruction uh, just in case. So maybe that will open up more negotiations and at least buy you some time if they you're, think you have it, that you're holding it. You're talking about escalating this, this cold war that I told you about earlier. Well, I'm not going to lie, I'm not a strategist, so I'm just thinking out loud. I wouldn't say it's not a bad I wouldn't say it's a bad idea. It's certainly an option. All at right, least if the they meantime, thought we have it, then... Maybe that'll buy us a little more time. In the meantime, what if we moved through the tree and got closer to the town and took a look? We might have to fight through some of these guys if they're still there. But, I mean, that halfling was being tortured there for the same reason as maybe. He might actually know something. If he's still there. I mean, the Albashar are definitely in the area. He's probably... Well, he's gone. He's probably gone. He's probably been eaten a long time ago, yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, we do our best. We can't always hold every... We can't keep every halfling from being eaten. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. It's just, just so the halfling. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But we could go search through that town. Look at these cheeks. Look them. at these cute cheeks. Who doesn't want to, to, to just pinch these and bite them off? So is that something you think we could do? And I'm looking at Artemis. We could always try. So that's the plan. You guys going to head over to Cadogan then? Should make a trip, a quick trip there to see if we can at least find this thing. And when we, we do, we can. First. Yeah, we won't do it. Yeah, today. after we finish sleeping and resting. 
Uh, I'm, but before I go rest, I'm gonna go make a tree outside. I'm gonna uh, grow the tree today and then use it tomorrow. Yeah, kind of, thing. Kind of right. thing. Didn't you already grow a tree? She I did, did but yeah. the tree is nice for like to shade and stuff. So I'm gonna grow one in like a different area of the compound. Yeah, the soldiers like the, that's what they were saying earlier is that they used the one that you grew uh, pretty often. So, all right. Uh, then, uh, as it so we're at time here anyway. So just to to clarify, then, so now I'll actually have an idea of where it is you guys intend to go. But you are uh, wanted to go to Cadogan to search for the for the sheaf of scales. Yeah, mm-hmm. based off the, some little halfling. <laughs> okay. All uh, right. How many spell slots do I need to use for studying that first one? Um, you mean what are you asking total? Yeah, because I, I was trying to get at least a couple hours in. Of study. Okay, uh, it's it's a uh, was it well the higher the slot the better the like the better your chances of success of, of studying it. But it's basically uh, for each hour you have to spend question mark slot up to you. Okay, then I will use my sixth level and three third levels. Okay, and for four hours total of studying it. Yes. Yeah, so All right. So roll roll your first arcana check. Your spell slot is adjusting the DC, is how that's working, so... Oh, yeah. oh right, I wanted to study it, too. I guess I'll do that after I finish the tree before I go to bed. Um, the other... So, I'll go ahead and tell you, too, Artemis, that the other one is going to take a lot of studying, you know, even even for Sarah to get it, let alone for you. Uh, but the, the one that she got today, uh, that's... So, failed, succeeded, <laughs> failed, and succeeded. All right, so two more... Two, two good chunks of understanding um, uh, that's going to take two more. So two more of it, and you'll actually have it, like two more successes, uh, and you'll have it down, like right, where you can, you can use it. I'll spend just a little bit of time on the easier one. Okay. Uh, the easier one, the one, yeah, the easier one, you, like, go ahead and make an arcana check, but this is just going to be for copying it into your book. It's like, you can already understand it. It's just a matter of copying it. So go ahead and make another check. <laughs> oh my god, well, I will re-roll that. I have one left. You need to use a chronal, chronal shift? Okay. Yep, I've got one left. Alright. Oh, that'll do. Alright, so the new <laughs> one, uh, the one that you just picked up today is called Chronal Inversion. Um, and how it works is you it, it's a bonus action to cast, uh, and then you can move and do whatever else you want to, and then if you choose to at the end of it, you can spend your reaction at any point before the beginning of your next turn to teleport back to where you were. So what kind of spell is that? Uh, alteration, I think. I'll have to look at it. Uh, okay. would, would you say what kind? Of, what are you referring to? Well, I mean, like, would um, you would be able to use it? Yeah. So, so that one. Well, not regularly, no. But because of your, you have ritual caster. Um, oh. You could copy it into your book. It would be. It'd be a first level spell slot for you too. It is. Yeah, it's the same spell. So, yeah, it is conjur. No, conjuration doesn't make sense. It'd probably be alteration. I would think. Um, anyways. Yeah, it would be, um, you'd be able to copy it as well, though. It's just a first level spell. Pogo would put it as well. Nazim, all of you guys, could, except for Nora. <laughs> okay, well, if Sarah wants to share it, I'll copy it. Yeah, I already did share it with you. And the more complex one, not the one you just got into your class <laughs> cooking. Right. Yeah, because I think we already studied a little bit in the. Yeah, we studied yeah. when we were at, at the other. Um, and his Corn's uh, uh, notes did tell you that you know that would make sense when you reach the tower why you needed that why you wanted you to make sure that you have that mastered. Uh, so, anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll put that in your character sheet for you too. Um, but the, then that will bring us to time here. Uh, next week is 